Uh, kia ora tato, no mai hari mai, and welcome to our second day of Committee of Council. And uh, on Friday, the 27th of May, 2022. Councillors, we'll just do, um, quickly do some apologies because we do have a couple this morning. Um, I'll get that up on screen. Anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll start the proceedings. Um, if we look to move that apologies be accepted for Councillor Meehan, um, and if we are continuing past 2 p.m. early departure for Councillor McAllard. And Councillor Barham? Thank you, Mr Mayor. I will be an apology for early departure, depending on how long we go for. Sure. Thanks. OK. We're just going to do this on a show of hands. Sorry, always why we get the IT sorted. So um, I'll look to move that, seconded by the Deputy Mayor. Um, no comments. We will do it with a show of hands. All those in favour? Thank you, that's unanimous. OK, we are back into Schedule C. And we'll catch... We'll, we'll carry on where we left off last night, um, and uh, we have another block of um, recommendations, motions from the floor. And oh, excuse me, Mr Mayor, sorry. I don't think we addressed the last one in the green block, which is 1540 Predator Free. There wasn't a... There was nobody... There was nobody. Oh, that, no one put that up. OK, thank you. Thank you for yep. explaining. Okay, we, we will look now to what we've got. The recommendation is coming um, from you, Councillor Johnson, around Council reducing operational expendi expenditure uh, according to Schedule C, and this is Category 2 in the following budget uh, lines. Um, and this is, again, um, operational MSL funding around the Palmy Proud magazine. Um, so, Councillor Johnson, over to you. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. So this is a um, not cancelling Palmy Proud, but reducing the expenditure and reducing the number of editions that we produce. And um, I think that in terms of the context of the budget that we're looking at this year, uh, that we need where we can to be reducing expenditure and it will all add up at the end of the day. So um, I do think that... Um, you know, there are a lot of comms opportunities that are not involving um, print um, and the print side of things um, is becoming, you know, uh, less accessible to people because we're not distributing Palmy Proud to everybody. Uh, it, it's just available in, in different places for people to pick up. So um, I'm happy with this as a as a moderate reduction and um, best for your support. Thank you. Councillor, could I just ask before I open it to the floor, um, your recommendation is for a year only and then it goes back up again? Um, that's a good question. Um, I assumed it was ongoing, uh, but maybe we could have some clarification from the officers as to what the intent was with that. Because it doesn't say just for this year, it just say per year. Uh, Donna Baker, Head of Marketing and Communications. That would be ongoing. Right, OK. Thank you. OK, I'll open it up to the floor. Um, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I'm not supporting this recommendation. Through the uh, questions... Yesterday, um, I asked around the value in terms of a marketing opportunity with Palmy Proud and the reach, and we heard that um, for a wider distribution, it, there were 35,000 uh, copies. The local was 11,000, plus obviously it's available online. I think the opportunity to market the city in a way that is much more natural and authentic, telling stories um, and 
what's delivered through Palmy Proud, I think has a bigger impact um, than maybe we realise. And if we are looking to reduce something within marketing as an example, actually I think that the city marketing campaigns would be better to review because my view is, is that in terms of the dollar spent, it's only $27,000 that we're considering. Actually, there's a greater value in uh, continuing as we are in looking at um, how we run city marketing campaigns instead. So um, I'm not going to support this. I don't think that it's, um, it's the right marketing budget to look at if we're looking for reductions. Councillor Finlay. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I won't support this. Um, Palmy Proud goes a lot further than what a lot of us actually know. I know my wife sends it to her family in the Philippines. I know several other families from the Philippines that send them back there as well. Um, I would go the other way. I would like to see it uh, put out a lot more. You know, uh, stands at the airport, places like that, as people walk out, looking for them to read on the aeroplane. They get left on the aeroplane, et cetera, et cetera. But I don't think we uh, spread it out enough, so I won't support it. Councillor Barrett. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. We live in a city that's got a lot of great stories to tell. And if this was actually curtailing distribution or pushing distribution online a bit more and keeping four editions, I might consider that. But I'm not prepared to cut in half the number of stories that we're telling and sharing. So I won't be supporting uh, what's put in front of us today. Councillor Bart. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can I ask a question? Yeah, um, according to my maths, if we totally abolish the addition, we'll still be spending about $120,000 on this. So can I ask the officers why $27,000 is related to only two editions and other I, twos are still costing. I think that was answered yesterday. You may not have... Um, you know, I'm sure you're in the room. Um, the officers um, said that some are spread wider, the distribution goes wider, i.e. to different parts of two-hour travel within Palmerston North, and the other, the other two issues um, stay locally. So that's why it's an uneven fall. Am I correct? Yeah. Thank you. I, Thank you. I thought I was listening. <laughs> um, Councillor Harpeter. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, I will be supporting this. I mean, the officers were asked if they could put some programmes up, so I think this is a programme. Um, it is looking from uh, four to two um, issues per year. Um, I do think that um, it is a, it's a great publication and credit to the department for putting it out, and I do think it's a good publication, but I think going for two two um, editions a year is, is, is a good amount. And I do agree with um, Councillor Barrett, if we could get more um, more online, that would be fantastic. But um, at the end of the day, I, I, I agree with what the officers have put up and I would go for the reduction of 27,000, so I will support the recommendation. Uh, Councillor Bowen, online. Thank you. I will support this recommendation. As Councillor Harpeter just said, we asked officers to put up the programmes where they thought we could make savings. And I think the Deputy Mayor said yesterday um, we shouldn't assume that was an easy process. I'm sure it was very difficult. But this is the programme that the marketing team have said can be reduced with some risk, but can be reduced. Um, I'm sure they looked across all of the programmes that they could look at, and this is the one that they've suggested. So on that basis, because we're looking for, to make some savings, I will support this recommendation. Um, just before I go back to um, the mover for a right of reply, um, look, if it was for a year, I would possibly support it, but this will be an ongoing cut, um, which has been signalled by the staff. So um, like Councillor Barrett, I think there's many good stories and a lot of stories which don't get into the mainstream media. Um, so I won't be supporting it. Um, I appreciate the, the mover and seconder's intent and, and, and also the officers for offering it up. Um, but actually for 27,000, I just, I just wonder if it's perhaps the wrong part to start looking at cutting. Um, we've, we're coming out of a pandemic. Um, we need to tell our stories uh, probably better now than we ever have. 
Um, it's, it's well regarded, the magazine. I was in Wellington last Friday and, and I saw some copies in a cafe I was having a coffee at and it, it made me proud because um, the magazine was there. So we will, we've just got to be a little bit careful that um, uh, the cuts don't go massively, massively deep. Um, and again, appreciate the intent, but it's something that I just can't support on because it is ongoing. Back to you, Councillor Johnson, for right of reply. Uh, thanks, Mr Mayor, and thanks, colleagues, for your comments. Um, I did note that there were four submissions from the public asking us to reduce the money that we spent on city marketing. Um, and myself and Councillor Nail did ask some questions of staff around what potential savings we could make in city marketing. There is a programme uh, for 150,000, I think, from off the top of my head for city marketing. Um, but, uh, you know, this is the uh, counter offer, if you like, that staff have been able to produce for us. And so uh, instead of um, putting up a proposal to cut an operational budget uh, that staff have not indicated they feel there's an opportunity to reduce, I thought it was better to reduce this one. And it's directly in response to submissions on the annual plan. But, um, you know, all, you all need to make your own decision on this. Thank you. OK, it's been well debated. We will now get the recommendation up and we will put it to the vote. So could you vote, please? Can you please just check you've voted? And I've checked that I have. And that is passed, eight votes for and seven against. Right, let's we'll get that up on screen. Right, the next one we have got up is uh, again on Schedule C, Category 2. Uh, reducing the operational expenditure around 1167 uh, play, placemaking co-created project. Um, and back to you, Councillor Johnson. Uh, thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, so this is around the um, activation in the CBD. And I'll note that it's not uh, removing all of the budget, it's the reduction in the budget. And I'm happy to support this because the Palmy Business Improvement District is up and running now and they, they directly um, have the opportunity to run projects like this in the CBD if they feel that it's beneficial uh, for business. So I think that um, now that the bid is up and running, uh, we need to be considering what projects they should run, what projects it's more appropriate for them to run 
and, and seeing whether there might be some savings as a result for the rest of the ratepayers on CBD activation. So I'd ask you to support this one. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Are there any others wishing to comment? There being none, would you like a right of reply? Okay, right, we will put this to the vote, please. And that has passed 12 votes for and three against. All right. We move to the next one. And this is again uh, reducing operational expenditure in Schedule C, Category 2. And this is around. Uh, Program 1447, Earthquake Prone Heritage Building Fund. And again, back to you, Councillor Johnson. Um, yes, again, this is a reduction rather than a, a deletion. Um, and I just note that um, I think it's reasonable that we make reductions across the board. Um, we can, we're making reductions in economic development, in arts and, and heritage, in community and in environmental and in council operations. And I think all of these areas need to share the pain in the same way that all of the ratepayers will be sharing the pain of the rates burden. And so even though uh, I am a particular supporter of this fund and um, not, um, you know, it's not high on my list of things that I would like to reduce, but nevertheless, um, I think you know, it will be a bit hypocritical of me to sit here and suggest reductions in everything except um, heritage and community. And, and you would all rightly uh, berate me for that. So I'm trying to be fair um, and making some cuts across the board and not necessarily protecting some areas rather than others. Thank you. OK, Councillor Harpeter. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm going to vote against this one. I think this is a, um, a fund that needs to be in here and it needs to be for the full value. And I think that um, there are some, some sacred funds and I know I can fully understand why the mover has put this in here. And, and oh, well, the officers put it up in the first place, but um, I prefer to leave it in because I do think there are um, buildings in the city that need to be protected and that's why this fund is here, so that, that people in the city can come to us and ask for some support. So I do think that this fund should stay as it is, so I'm going to vote against it because I think the fund should stay as it is. I understand we were coming from, but I think this one should stay as it is, so I'm going to vote against it. Um, can I just ask the officer, uh, Chief Planning Officer, this, this fund is over, regularly oversubscribed? Uh, yeah, there is a heavy demand on this fund. Um, so you'll recall the f in the last LTP, um, 150,000, 100 of 100,000 of the 150 was allocated to All Saints. So the f uh, the first year, so this is the first year we've had the 150 available, uh, the total 150 available, and, and there has been heavy interest. Right. Okay. Thank you. Um, I I won't support this. Um, I can recall, and, and heritage funding has already been slashed with the heritage fund. So just be aware of that um, when you're voting. Um, Again, appreciate we're trying to make cuts, um, but this is massively, I, I believe that the, the money being put into earthquake strengthening around our city is huge. This is a very, very small piece of the bigger pie. If we reduce it, uh, we're below other cities. I can recall when we rose the money um, up, it was a very small fund in the early days, and 
we had a paper that came to us to show what other cities around New Zealand were doing. And many provincial cities, much smaller than us, were doing a lot more. Um, we have our own issues here, um, and I just believe this again will be an ongoing decrease. So um, I, I won't support it for that reason. Councillor Hancock. Uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Mayor. Look, um, yeah, I, I also will not support this, um, and it's very, very simple. It's an equation. We've got um, we've got 15 years to uh, get this tidied up, and uh, one year delayed is uh, is will just add pressure to uh, resolving some of the earthquake issues around the city. So, um, I think it would be a very um, unwise move. Thank you, Councillor Bowen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You know, at, um, I think I said yesterday, it pained me greatly to defer the new programme of the Heritage Fund, and I agreed to, to do that because it was a new programme. This is very different for me. This is an ongoing programme, which, um, as the office said, is very well used in our community, and it's also very needed as we work through the legislative time frame for earthquake-prone buildings. And without it, we run the risk of um, demolition by neglect, which is, as we all know, a very real risk around our city. This enables us to provide support to building owners to think about what can be achieved in a cost-effective way and where other lines of support come from. It enables them sometimes to access other sources of funding um, and enables us to keep some of our heritage buildings, which we would otherwise be at risk of losing. So I won't support this cut today. Um, Councillor Naila. Thank you. Um, I will be supporting this. Um, we had specific submissions um, from people who asked us to give away money less. This is giving our ratepayers money away in a year that they just simply can't afford it. Um, I'm hearing the, con um, the comments, and I would, I'm not sure what the actual wording is of the recommendation, but I'd be happy if um, the mover was happy um, to adjust that to ensure that it says for one year only, um, earthquake prone heritage building fund. Um, if we could add in for one year only, um, then I think that may help address the concerns that people have about the workload we need to do over the next 15 years for earthquake-prone buildings. Um, is the mover...? Yes, I, I'm happy with that um, okay. change. Just a, a point of clarification, Mr Mayor, the time frame for some of our earthquake-prone buildings is seven years. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, that's take it that's noted, taken into account. We're just getting it up on screen. So it's uh, been added into the recommendation that the following budget lines for one year only. Okay, write a reply back to you, um, Councillor Johnson. Uh yeah, you know, I'm hearing that this is a difficult one and um you know, the purpose in us going through this schedule is to have a debate line by line on items where we think we might be able to reduce. And I do appreciate that not everybody will want to reduce everything that I have suggested. But, you know, I haven't suggested, but I have agreed with officers that they've put up. Um, and that's OK. But we do have to, at the end of the day, uh, think about the general benefit to the community of putting this money in compared to other money that we're spending on other things. And to my mind, um, you know, the direct community benefit of this money next year isn't as strong for me as perhaps some of the other operational funding that we're looking at. And so it's for that reason that I'm suggesting we make the reduction this year. Um, it is difficult. This is a difficult process. Um, but there has to be some give. Uh, otherwise, we're not going to get the reductions that our community have asked for. Thank you. OK. We will look to vote, please.
Okay, that is um, failed by six votes for and nine against. Right, we'll move to the next one. Okay, again, this is um, operational reduction to Schedule C, um, Category 2, in the following budget line. Again, this is a MSL operational um, fund to the Massey Living Lab. Okay, Councillor Johnson, back to you. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I noted the officer comment that this, uh, by cutting this programme, we would reduce or remove opportunity for academic research to inform decisions. Um, but I don't really think that council should be in the business of funding academic research. Um, and, uh, you know, I say this as someone whose husband does academic research. Um, I think that actually academic research um, can be funded by people other than our direct ratepayers. And so I feel that this isn't a priority programme. Uh, in a year when we're trying to make some budget uh, cuts and to show some restraint. Thanks. Um, councillors, I won't, look, we're making progress and, and it's healthy to have this debate um, and, and the cuts that we need to make, but I'm really loath to cut partnered funding. Um, this does come with uh, quite a high level of risk. Um, and I would, I would think that the academic research is just one part of it. It actually gives us a report and a program of work which officers and indeed the community uh, can then use. Since I've been at this table, I can recall many different living lab projects, whether it be around transport, uh, waste minimisation um, and, and climate change. So I, I'm not going to support it for the fact that I couldn't look the VC in the eye and say, we're really partnering with you as a city. Because I don't think we are would in doing this. And likewise with some of the other programmes that are up as well. Happy to take stuff which is, uh, um, has, a, has a more of an individualistic um, cut to us as, a, as an institutional organisation, but uh, when we're partnering with people, this is slightly dangerous territory. Councillor Barrett. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If I might, a question through to officers to understand if cutting this funding in a month's time would disrupt ongoing projects? Uh, yes, it would. We've been working closely uh, with um, Alana Ryan at the university to try and develop a program particularly focused on climate change over a number of years. Um, there's been some... Uh, conversations about some, some other projects, particularly uh, well, early conversations about some other projects, for instance, around uh, e-scooters and, and those sorts of things. Thanks. Um, look, I, I do um, appreciate the intent of, of the mover and the group of councillors wanting to see us do everything we can to, to reduce the rates um, level this year. But for me, this is a, a no-go territory as well from the relationship point of view, from the disruption that would be caused in a very short time to um, ongoing activity there. And I think we need to be a little bit careful with the uh, academic research label and how we um, apply that and frame that. The point is we've got a significant um, resource of expertise that we are very lucky to have in our community and for a very small marginal investment, we can harness that and bring it to help answer questions that are relevant for decisions at this table. And if I were to write that sentence in the comment, I would label it decisions at this table because it is relevant for us as a city. And if we don't go to the university for these sort of answers, we can go to the consultants and guess what that costs. <laughs> Councillor Naylor. <coughs> Thank you. Um, I also think that our relationship with Massey is important, but I think um, some elected members are overstating how fragile that relationship is and the impact of one change to one, um, f one lot of funding, how that might impact that. Many of you were there with, um, as well as me, 
to um, attend the visit a few weeks back and we sat in the refractory and listened to their thanks to us for the 200,000 that we had, con had contributed towards the upgrade of that building. And then they went on to say that they were really pleased with the five million surplus they'd made that year. And I did have to sit and think whether that really measured up appropriately in my own mind um, where the money that we give them is actually our ratepayers' money. And I don't think this year is the year to give away more money to another organisation who will cope perfectly well without it. So I'm definitely happy to support this. Just, just like to correct one of the comments there, it was not 200,000 that we gave the refractory. Um, I, I said that that was what they had said at the time. I, I'm not saying so whether it was correct just or not. The office but is they, they thanked us for 200,000. 150,000 was what we did. Oh, they must have got it wrong then. Yeah. So it was 150,000. Back to you, uh, Councillor Johnson. Um, thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, look, I know this is not uh, a lot of money on its own, but it's about the overall context, which is a situation in which we've had hundreds of ratepayers come to us and tell us that the rates burden is going to be too high on them next year. Um, and they've asked for us to do whatever we can to reduce that burden. And part of that is a process of going through areas where we can make cuts in spending. And so... Um, I know that every line item, you know, one of us, if not more than one of us, can put up a good argument as to why it could stay. But there are also good arguments where, you know, things have to go. And uh, this this is not really, uh, I don't think, um, going to have a big impact on welfare, uh, um, on well-being outcomes for the city. I, I really don't. So I don't think this is a critical programme. And um, I, I don't think that we need to be spending $27,000 of ratepayer money on it. Thank you. Okay, councillors, we will look to vote, please. Uh, that has failed for um, four votes for and 11 against. Okay, we'll bring the next one up. And this is around, um, again, further reductions to um, operational expenditure around Schedule C, Category 2, and this is uh, Program 1480, Sponsorship Opportunities uh, for Council with Economic Benefits. And um, back to you, Councillor Johnson. Uh, thanks, Mr Mayor. So um, I did make some inquiries as to uh, our spending on economic development. And, you know, the majority of that, over $2 million, um, is done through CEDA. Um, there's other money, but it's tied up in contracts. Um, or providing um, the eyesight um, function. So there's, there's, if we're looking to make sure that all areas of council um, do uh, bear some reductions, then this is one area um, of economic development that I feel we could make um, a cut on. And so um, it's not budget that um, is committed at the moment. Um, so it's more a lost opportunity cost than actually um, something that isn't going to uh, be done that was done, uh, promised to be done. And so I think um, in the scheme of things, it's only fair that economic development should also um, be part of the cost cutting measures. And so I'd ask you to support this one. Thank you. Councillor Harpeter. I should probably expect, thank you, Mr. Mayor, I will not be supporting this. I think this is um, about attracting conferences to the region. 
We have attracted the LGNZ conference, which is fantastic, and I think we need this um, fund um, to attract conferences to the region for ARENA and for um, the conference uh, and convention centre. That's exactly what this fund is for, which is what I asked the officers, and that's what they said this fund was for. So I think um, it is um, underutilised because of COVID, and that's why there is some funding left in it, because we haven't had the opportunity to be able to use our facilities because we've had um, COVID. So I do think um, yeah, there is um, some opportunity for us going forward to be able to attract big conferences into the region, and I do think that we're a little bit, um, you know, we, I think we need to look to the future, we need to be optimistic and say, yes, we do want to keep this fund in play so that we can actually get some big conferences into the region, so we can build our economic development and we can be a city that has that opportunity. So I'd, I will not support it, and I think that that's what we want for our city. Um, councillors, I won't be supporting this, as I said earlier. Um, I'm very loath to cut partnered funding, and really, this gives council no opportunity to attract Zippo, anything that isn't locked down, contracted, and um, we will see quite a slide um, when the word no goes out to every opportunity. It really is a fund... Um, the 50,000 we have here, um, and I could have, for a year only, I could have taken um, or supported a, a, a possible hit um, to it, um, but this is ongoing. So this effectively means we are closed for business. It means that the dollars, the 50,000 um, that attracts millions, um, literally will not be there. Uh, and the cut actually goes much deeper. So this will be the last year if you are voting for the last year of supporting the New Zealand Food Awards, you'll be the last year of supporting any extra activity over and above what happens in community level at ARENA. That's what this fund does help. So, again, we just have to be careful on cutting partnered funding. I do note there's other, certainly other um, items here that have been left out, um, but this one, I know that they're easy targets and I appreciate they're being put up and it's healthy to have the debate. But we, we, we will be cutting off our nose to spite our face here, so I won't be supporting it. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I'm not going to support this recommendation either. I think um, the way Councillor Johnson outlined it, um, in terms of it being a lost opportunity, um, is really the reason I'm not supporting it. Um, I think we've set processes up in this organisation to try and depoliticise some of the requests that we get. And very much like the SPG funding where there's an opportunity for um, groups to go through a, a specific process, um, I see it the same with this, where if we remove this fund, because essentially a portion of it has already been committed, and so what the proposal is is to remove the rest of it. Um, I've got concerns that we will then have groups coming directly into the council chamber asking for um, support, sponsorship support, and our track record for saying no outside of an annual budget or long-term budget um, process is not that good. We don't typically stick to, to the plan um, outside of this process. And so actually I think that the sponsorship fund gives an opportunity for us to just direct people to that where they can go through a process and if it, if it suits, if the budget's appropriate, then staff will make the call. Um, so I, I guess that's the key reason. The other thing is we heard a brief comment from an officer yesterday to say that we had missed out on a band or a musical act of some sort coming to Palmy um, because of the lack of sponsorship or partnership opportunities with the city. And I guess, look, in the biggest scheme of things, I'd hate to think we were saying no to someone like Beyonce because we didn't have a sponsorship fund. So we just can't risk that. I would urge you to oppose this recommendation. <laughs> Councillor Barrett. <laughs> How do you follow that? Yeah, look, the timing's just all wrong here. I mean, we're, we're in a situation where we're turning back on uh, venues, we're turning back on conferencing, we're turning back on events, and why would we turn the taps off in a way that actually cuts that off?
Councillor Naylor. Thank you. I'd just like to try and provide a little bit of balance with what I think are some very emotive statements that have been made. We have a $4.5 million um, budget that we invest in economic development. That is what is in our draft annual budget. If we take 42000 away from that, I don't think we're saying that we're closed for business. I don't think that means we've got no ability to attract. We have an economic development agency that we give around $2 million to, to do that exact work. I mean, I've, I've put some councillor help inquiries in over the years about how this fund has been spent. And what has come back to me when I've looked at it, I've thought it really does have quite minimal direct benefit to our ratepayers. This is a small amount of a very big fund that I think is appropriate for us to trim down in this year, in this current, um, current challenging environment for our ratepayers. Councillor Bowen. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I'd, I'd come out following the Beyonce comment. I felt there was nothing more to add. <laughs> OK. Uh, back to you, Councillor Johnson, for right of reply. Um, yes, thank you, colleagues, for your comments, even though some of them were perhaps, uh, how do we say, it, overly dramatic. Um, but um, I really don't think that this uh, $42,000 is as significant as uh, some of you are suggesting. Um, and the other thing to say is, let's be clear about what this is. It's a kind of a sweetener to organisations to come and um, do business here. Now, is that what it takes these days to get someone to come and, 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 and bring a conference to Palmerston North um, or to uh, bring a, a musical act or whatever else to the arena? I mean, because if it is, um, I think we need to be looking at how we're doing things. So um, I really, um, you know, I know some of you um, are, are kind of quite keen on this sort of gig economy and think that it's very important. And no doubt it does bring benefits to the city. But, you know, is it really fair to ask great pairs to pay $42,000 um, to give that money away to other organisations to entice them to come to Palmerston North? And, I'm thinking that it's not that fair, honestly. OK. We will vote now, please, to the recommendation. Um, and that has failed. Six votes for and nine against. All right, we'll go to the next one. And again, this is around um, operational ex um, reducing operational expenditure in uh, Schedule C, Category 2. Um, and this is... Um, 1724 Citywide Diversion of Waste from Landfill Investigation Studies. Back to you, Councillor Johnson. Um, yeah, so this is a potential deferral that we could do to um, take some of the pressure off this year's rates rise. Uh, it's not um, cutting the programme entirely, it's deferring it. And it's an investigation that might... Um, you know, well, that will obviously give us information about the to inform the waste minimisation and management plan. But, um, you know, if staff have advised that there is the potential to defer it for one year, then I think we should take that opportunity. Thanks. Um, Councillor Butt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can I ask a question? To my understanding, there is always already some work going on this this project. So, if we do this, will it? affect the ongoing project or work by the team? Uh, Morena, acting um, GM resource recovery today. Um, yeah, so the work that we've got planned for next year, so um, towards the end of next year, we are looking to have our new WIMP, or Waste Minimization Plan, 
Um, this work is looking at things in particular like diverting things like mattresses and demolition and construction waste and things like that. The risk of this being um, deferred is essentially for that new waste plan, we would be having to make assumptions on some of the actions and things that are directly going to come out of that. Uh, and those being assumptions, they could or could not be true, whereas I suppose these, this investigation will allow us to have some facts to back that up. Thank you. But, but it's, could I just ask, it will continue, the, the, the motion is to continue that work, we're just delaying it? We're always constantly doing this work, but this programme is to fund those specific actions. Right. So if we but, don't defer this, we will not be able to inform that with facts to the next WIMP. It would be but it the just delays week. the work, doesn't it? Correct. Okay. Cool. Um, Councillor Naylor. Thank you. Yep, I'm happy to support this one. Um, Recognising that, I don't know if others recall, but when we did the long-term plan process, um, we got quite concerned about the size of the rate increase in the first year, and we pushed a lot of things out to the second year. And that, that included a lot of investigations and feasibility studies. So th this year, we have got, it's quite weighty in that area, and particularly in the resource recovery area, um, the increase is quite significant. I was just trying to work it out, but it's, you know we're going up from 5.3 million investment to 6.6 .6 million, so it's quite a big step up. So. I mean, with that also comes significant workload. I think with the decisions that we made yesterday, particularly around the envelope that we give staff, we need to recognise that with that, we need to be expecting them to do less work in this year. Um, health and wellbeing is important, and that is not something that we should compromise. So I think with that, we need to actually assist that in, the, in terms of the workload. I think deferring this work um, is very sensible in the light of the other work that's happening in the resource recovery um, space. So I think this, this one does make a lot of sense. And obviously officers have put that forward um, you know, as, as a you know, sensible option. Uh, Councillor Barrett. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I won't be supporting this. A couple of reasons around that. Firstly, the community has a really strong expectation that we lift our game in, in waste and recycling and, and resource recovery. Um, we hear that consistently every time we ask the community what is a priority. Um, they want action in this space. And in particular, some of these um, more challenging areas like um, construction, demolition, waste, which is a huge part of our waste stream right now that is not being um, mined for all the actual resources that could be recovered out of it um, nearly to the extent that it could. The second reason that we need to um, maintain investment at this time is because, as we've just heard, things tend to get pushed out of year one that look like they can sit in year two. The risk is that now if we push it into year three, we actually are right back into the situation that we were um, before this long-term plan and that we don't actually have the information to hand to actually inform the investment direction. We need to do investigations in year one and year two so that we can set up our next long-term plan on the basis of solid evidence about what will be most effective in investing ratepayer um, funds during that next phase. So um, as we've heard, the waste management minimization plan um, is up for renewal and it's not too long and we'll be starting to build the next long-term plan. We need this sort of information to feed into that so that we as a community can lift our game around resource recovery. Councillor Beatty. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, normally I wouldn't support this, but I am going to support this because I think there's going to be a lot of directives from the government. We're already hearing a lot of things like um, the food waste coming through nationally through government. So I think actually it would be a good time just to pause, wait for 12 months, and actually see what money and stuff and directives have come in from the government about this. So um, yeah, I'm just happy to put this on hold for 12 months. Uh, before I go back to you, Councillor, uh, for right of reply, um, uh, what gave me some heart is the work still, the actual physical work still continuing. Just the other day I had Central Demolitions uh, talking to me about the uh, uh, construction waste um, uh, 
that they are doing um, and minimisation of that. And along, I had a visit out to Timber Recyclers out at our um, uh, resource recovery um, centre. And the work actually is happening. Uh, this is the investigation stuff to back up the uh, to back up those claims. The officer said that um, that will be delayed. It won't stop. Just it is delayed. So I'm comfortable that we can uh, continue making some real efforts in this space. And as Councillor Beatty said, there has been a massive change in government direction. They were absent at the table um, for many years in this space, and we're getting. Um, government legislation and reforms coming out almost weekly and monthly on this uh, on this space. So I'm comfortable that uh, we won't stop some real work happening by just delaying the investigation a year, as long as it does happen, and I'll be right behind Council about supporting it next year. So um, I'm happy to delay this and support the motion. Back to you, Councillor, for right of reply. Uh, thanks, Mr Maron. Thanks, colleagues, for your comments. Um, I just note that we're almost at the end of this uh, yellow category of items where there was the potential to save 681,000 operational. And uh, so far, uh, my calculation is we've saved about 40,000. Um, so this um, programme is an expensive one. And uh, I think deferring it by a year would give us some significant operational savings um, in a year where we're under pressure. Um, and I don't think that it will have a significant adverse effect on our waste minimisation efforts in the longer term. So I'd ask for your support. Thank you. OK, councillors, we will vote, please. That is passed, 11 votes for and four against. Okay, um, we have a couple of new ones that have just been added in. So um, this again is around um, council reducing operational expenditure in uh, Schedule C, Category 2. Um, and it is Programme 1145, Green Corridors Project, um, and the continued development of that. Um, so that's Councillor Naylor, over to you. Thank you. Um, this is one I'm happy to support. Um, obviously, I love the work that Green Corridors Project deliver, and I think that's really important. Um, but my, my reason for being happy to support this is twofold. One is that later we will be... Um, looking at a recommendation to increase the amount of trees that we plant for the purposes of shade. And in my mind, that is a higher priority um, than, um, and, and so it's really a substitute or transference in my mind. I think where we add things in, we should actually look to perhaps um, take something out to support that rather than continuing to add and add on. So that's one reason. The other reason is this is the sort of work that sometimes community organisations get behind in terms of voluntary um, effort. Um, it was only, I think, last week or the week before that someone contacted me from a large organisation saying, you know, we want our staff to be able to donate and plant some trees. Can you put us in touch with someone? So via Hannah, they were put in touch with the Green um, Corridors Project, and I'm hopeful that that will um, enable um, the similar sort of work that this project does, um, but through volunteer efforts. So um, for this year, obviously, I, just one year only, I'm happy to support this reduction. Can I just get clarification from officers? This is continued, isn't it? This is a reduction that continues. I'm Great. happy to. Great. I'm happy to include the words for one year only. Okay, if the is the seconder is okay with that? Okay, good. Well, I'll put that in. Um, look, councillors, I'm going to stick to my comments from earlier. I'm loathe to cut partnered funding. Green corridors. Um, came with us to the local government um, 
Excellence Awards a number of years ago. And I couldn't look Selwyn York in the eye and just say, <laughs> we're cutting all this. Um, they won a national award for the work that they did in um, uh, that Green Corridors project. Um, the 90 odd thousand that we um, uh, fund this organisation, we get literally hundreds of thousands of dollars back in community effort and other partners as well. So again, I appreciate that we're doing the cuts. Uh, we've just got to be careful we're not cutting fingers off while we do all this. So I won't be supporting it. Councillor Beatty. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I totally agree. This, this is short-sighted and this is just a kick in the guts to those all those volunteers up there. I mean, the amount of work they do in that green corridors and the asset that we've got for the city, I mean, I'm just, yeah, I'm not supporting it. Councillor Barrett. Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, one of the keys to success for Green Corridors has been continuity and having um, people that are um, working in that space over time so that when community groups do come to us and say we'd like to do some planting or we'd like to um, be supportive, that there's actually a point of contact and they can actually get on and do that. And so I, I find um, the argument um, that's being put forward um, fails on that ground and that if you pull out the continuity, we actually lose a whole lot of coordination and a whole lot of benefit um, in that space. The other thing that I'd point to is that as this program matures, the maintenance needs do continue to grow. And I remember the last time we had green corridors in this chamber, they talked about how a lot of the first generation plants that are in there are now beginning to mature to the point that they're actually needing to put that second layer of canopy plants in and make sure that those come up and through and succeed and that we don't actually run ourselves the risk of going in the opposite direction and losing progress that has been gained over 21 years of volunteer activity now. Um, it was only a month ago that Green Corridors was organizes, organizing a symposium to celebrate their 21st and all the impact they've had. COVID derailed that actual celebration, but this is 21 years of community activity that we need to stick with in terms of our support. So I will not be supporting the recommendation. Councillor Hancock. Yeah, thanks, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, I've just got a couple of comments to make. I'm not going to support this. Um, uh, I think we need to uh, recall that um, Green Corridors has suffered uh, from significant thefts of plants in the last uh, 12 months. Um, they are a flagship group in terms of uh, volunteerism within the city, and they provide very, very um, uh, strong benefits for the community as, as a whole. So I most certainly won't be supporting this. And uh, I agree with uh, Councillor Barrett's um, uh, comments around going backwards. Thank you. Um, online, Councillor Johnson. Uh, thanks, Mr Mayor. I won't be supporting this either. Uh, I think the Green Corridors project uh, produces a huge amount of benefit for our community. Um, it's uh, growing an asset, basically, that people can enjoy. Um, it's helping with many of our goals in terms of uh, increasing biodiversity and also um, increasing active recreation. So, um, as others have pointed out, you know, the dollars that you put into a voluntary organisation are refunded many times over. Uh, by the voluntary effort of the people involved. And uh, it is true that the Green Corridors came to us not that long ago to explain some of the challenges that they were facing. And I think it would be, um, you know, it would be really a step too far for me uh, to see us reduce this budget at this stage. So I'm not going to support it, and I hope you won't either. OK, back to you for right of reply, Councillor Naylor. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I also really appreciate the work they do, and I think it's valuable. In terms of continuity, I think we need to acknowledge that, that we would still be investing 70000 into this in the coming year if we did reduce. Um, so I think that's still significant, and I think the volunteers that work in this space are also our ratepayers, and I think it's widespread view enough that our ratepayers are wanting us to look at ways to trim things back for this year, to soften the blow, um, and so I think that they would actually understand, but that's, that's just my view. Okay, councillors, we will vote, please. Oh, sorry, how do I cancel that? I voted wrong. Mm. 
And that has failed three votes, four and 12 against. Right, we have another one that's popped in. So this is um, from Councillor Naylor, and again, this is around reducing operational expenditure, Schedule C, Category 2, Program 1464, uh, Massey Arts Funding. Councillor Naylor. Um, thank you. Once again, the officers have put this up for our consideration. And when I thought about this one, I did recall um, discussions either last year or the year before, I can't remember which one, where it was said that this was just, we were going to continue to fund this just for one more year. So I was a little bit surprised to see it included still in this year's budget. So I'm, I'm certainly happy um, for, well, comfortable for this one to be removed. Can I just get an officer comment just to explain that? Is there in response to that, please? Stephanie? Just to put you on the spot. There's a microphone just there. Kia ora, Stephanie Valvin, um, Community Development Manager. I'm not aware of the um, conversation around it being um, finished. We're um, currently, we've just started a review of the Artists in Residence Program, so that's going to be coming to the Arts, Culture and Heritage Committee um, in August, I believe. Um, but this particular funding is for um, initiatives that come out of the Artists in Residence funding, including Summer Shakespeare. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Bowen. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor, and I can probably shed a little light on the conversation that Councillor Naylor recollects, is that the, the internal funding from Massey was under threat and we had thought that that might finish the programme. Actually, that, um, that has been resolved very successfully with Massey um, committing a longer term to this programme. And so I won't support us removing what is actually a very small um, support for a wider programme that includes Summer Shakespeare. Um, firstly, as the mayor has said, partnered funding is, um, you venture into tricky funding, tricky re realms if you start cutting partnered funding. What we put forward, 10%, $10,000 is about 10% of only the Summer Shakespeare budget, if it all went to Summer Shakespeare, which it doesn't. Um, and you might say at that, well, if Massey are putting in 90%, they could put in 100%. Um, Massey don't put in 100% or even 90%. What our funding does with them is it enables them to go out and seek external funding, which guarantees free access to our community to these initiative projects. It's actually um, it's a really important program in um, contributing to access to the arts and what is quite an elite branch of the arts, actually. And for me, this is very personal. But first, um, my access to theatre was in a free summer Shakespeare programme in my hometown. I would have never gone to the theatre, let alone Shakespeare, if it hadn't been for this kind of programme. Um, it enables access into institutions where people don't see themselves. And we enable that by a small amount of funding and allowing access to public spaces to do it in. So this is actually a really um, important, very small program that has significant benefit to um, our wider community and particularly our marginalised communities. So I would ask you not to cut this funding, please. Um, councillors, I'm, I'm going to stick to my principles and I'm loath to cut partnered funding. I know it's small and, and somewhat probably an easy target at $10,000, but as um, Councillor Bowen uh, alluded to, there's greater ramifications here. Um, you know, one of our um, civic awardees, uh, Dr Angie Farrow, was a, a mainstay of this program. And it, it, it really contributes to us being uh, different to some of our provincial colleagues. It, it, it gives the city a, a, a sense of vibrancy um, and there's Nobody else that I know in a provincial sense that does a summer Shakespeare to the extent that we do, where we partner with um, our university and others to deliver this. So although it's small, it, has, it, will be, 
it will be cutting quite deep and send what I believe is the wrong signal. It's $10,000, it's, it's not worth touching, so I would leave it and I wouldn't support this motion. Councillor Johnson. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, I won't be supporting this motion either. Um, I, I think Councillor Bowen made some very good points. Um, it certainly is true that, um, you know, access to the arts is often limited by uh, the depth of your pocket. Um, tickets to things are often quite expensive. But here's an opportunity for a free experience of the theatre in the open air um, that Summer Shakespeare provides. And I think the amount of community good that's done through that is quite large uh, for the very small amount of funding. Um, and then there are the other aspects of the Artists in Residence programme where, you know, at the moment, um, free workshops are being provided by uh, the current Artist in Residence. Um, you know, there's a, there's a, I guess it's possibly unseen by some councillors, uh, but those of us that move in those spaces see the benefits to the wider community that this programme brings. Um, and I think, as the Mayor said, uh, for the small amount of funding that it is, it does a, a huge amount of good. And so I'd encourage you not to cut it. Thanks. Councillor Havida. Uh, it's all been said. I'll just say I'm going to oppose it because of the partnership with Messi. Um, back to you, Councillor Naylor, for right of reply. Um, just two things, really, that I heard through submissions. One is to please give less money away, and the other one is focus on what's essential. And I love the work that, um, that you know, that happens in this space, and I think the arts is, is important, but I think it's, it's something that our community is asking us to contribute less to this year. So it's, it's a difficult decision, but that's my reason for supporting it. Thank you. All right, we'll put that to the vote, please. And that has failed. One vote for and 14 against. OK. We will now look to um, the next one. Now, this is around, again, um, operational reducing operational expenditure, Schedule C, Category 2, and this is Programme 1501, Public Sculpture Trust Funding, from 50,000 to 25,000, um, noting the difference to Schedule C. And this is um, moved by um, Councillor Johnson. Um, over to you. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, so this, um, as we all know, has been a long-standing programme and has provided some really um, spectacular, I think we'd agree, uh, pieces of art um, in the CBD. Um, but it's not um, without its critics. Um, we received a lot of submissions uh, asking us to cut this program. And so um, to my mind, some balance would be perhaps to reduce the funding to the program. Um, and I understand that, you know, uh, this is not necessarily going to be a popular um, move with some around the table. But nevertheless, I think we do have to take heed of submissions. Um, we, there's been a whole lot of uh, benefit to the city in having the Public Sculpture Trust and the co-funding that they've managed to attract, and, and I'm certainly not denying that. But I do think perhaps the time has come to uh, scale back a little bit on this programme and um, achieve some savings. So that's the thinking behind this proposal. Thanks. Uh, Councillor Beatty. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, we've spent a lot of time with the Sculpture Trust in the last few years working through this relationship and we've got a, a memorandum of understanding and they put in a lot of work and a lot of money and a lot of time to get us, get us some absolute amazing pieces of sculpture in the city. Um, it is totally unwise to be cutting this budget and there will 
there will be ramifications through this trust that we have with this with the sculpture trust. So I just I, I cannot support it. And again, I think it's something that would be short-sighted. And I mean, as far as submission, submissions go, there's a lot of submissions in this plan uh, that are public submissions that we don't agree with. So if we go through this and say, well, four people don't agree with this and four people agree with that, there's a lot of stuff in the submissions that we vote either for or against. So just because we've had a, two or three submissions because some people don't like art or think we're wasting money on the sculptures, I don't think um, is a valid excuse. If I had 340 in the chamber, I would look at it, but we haven't. We've only got a few, so I think we've got to be relative. It's all relative to me. Thank you. Um, before I go to the Deputy Mayor, look, um, I'm not going to support this either. I'm coming back to my principle around I'm really loathe to cut partnered funding. Um, this will tip the Sculpture Trust over the edge. Mark my words. They will not return, and they'll probably fire a couple of torpedoes at us on the way out the door. They've provided, and I just did a little add up, and I may even have some of my, and I'm probably being a bit conservative here, but they would have provided um, in context around $2.5 million worth of public art gifted, gifted to the city and the people of Palmerston North over the last uh, dozen to 15 years. Yes, some submissions have been made, um, and like Councillor Beatty said, we've got some, but actually some of them have been made in ignorance too, not really understanding that the city is the minor player in this partnership. We provide $50,000 a year, and we get many hundreds back um, every year. Um, I understand people, some people see it as throwing away money, and it's um, art is subjective. But actually, again, it comes back to making us a little bit different from our provincial colleagues. We're a university city, uh, we're a cultured city, and this adds huge vibrancy to our city. Again, I just think it's, it's not cutting a finger off, it's cutting a hand off, so I won't support it and ask you not to as well. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I'm also going to oppose this. I think actually what we've seen over the years with the sculptures in the city centre is that they've become quite an iconic part of the identity. And um, I, I know from our um, conference planning with LGNZ at the moment that actually a significant part of what we're putting into um, the welcome pack for delegates is going to be the art trail through the city, um, the sculpture trail. So. It is something that we, we promote. Um, there's been conversations around um, access to the arts. Actually, I think this is another example of, uh, of public access. Um, and if anything, I think that it's probably um, worthy of having a conversation with the Sculpture Trust around levelling up a little bit and looking at how we can actually take some of uh, this public art out to our um, suburban centres. And so um, I, I think that there's real opportunity for partnership. I guess, look, the other thing is, can you imagine being the person who has to go and tell the Sculpture Trust that we've cut your funding? Um, we've had very passionate submissions from them in the past, right. and I would not want to be that person. Um, so actually, I think that um, it's worthy to acknowledge the work they do, uh, continue as we are, and actually look at the plan for moving forward um, and the opportunities that we might have. So I, I will not be supporting this. Uh, Councillor Bowen. Thank you. Speaking as the person who would probably end up having that conversation, <laughs> I'll say, please, please, I understand absolutely the reason why this has come forward. Um, but this, we, we did cut their budget, if you remember, in COVID. what I think we call the COVID budget. We took away that funding for the year um, and it put this relationship on very rocky territory. So I'm not against a conversation about what the future partnership looks like, but I'd rather that was a conversation done with a partner rather than a budget cut landed on them. And we talk about the value of volunteerism and we have lots of community groups in our organisation who give their hours so very generously. We do not have many who give their money and certainly not at the rate that the Public Sculpture Trust does and the Mayor alluded to that. Um, they more than match our funding and they donate that asset back to the city. 
which becomes an asset that is on our books and appreciates in value. Something else council doesn't have access to a great deal, appreciating assets. And it is those assets against which we borrow. So actually, the benefit of public art is not the subjective, do I like it or not? It's the addition of an asset to our city books. Um, and that is very good value um, return on that small investment that we put in every year. So I would ask you please not to cut this budget again this year. Thank you. Um, Councillor Naylor. Thank you. Um, I love the work that um, the Sculptor Trust has done over the years, absolutely. And this was quite a difficult one um, for me to consider when I was thinking about what I might be happy to support. Um, but the submissions, it wasn't just one or two. There were quite a number of submissions um, where people, even people who were art lovers, said, yes, we love the sculptures, but just pause, pause, let's enjoy the ones we have. First of all, it started out to be a 10-year um, relationship with the Public Sculpture Trust, and that's continued. Um, there, was, there has been discussion sometimes, should we do this every second year and things like that. I think it is going to be worth a conversation with our partner. And certainly if this gets across the line, I would be very happy to be the one to talk to Simon, I, you know, as someone who loves the work that they have, they have done. I think, I think it's not only the submissions on page 66 that were specifically related to the arts that I'm listening to, but it's the submissions starting from page 111 that for 17 pages talk about the fact that they want us to focus on essential things this year. The reality for some of the people in our community, even if we get the rates increased down, is that they are going to still have a higher rates increase than, that, than what they can feel they can afford this year. It's going to be really difficult for them when they're struggling to buy so, um, groceries at the supermarket to see another sculpture go up that's used with the money that they're paying in rates. You know, that's the, th the sort of thing that we just need to think about. I know these decisions are hard, but this is for, this is for one year. And it's certainly, I think it could be done in a way, communicated in a way that respects and acknowledges the partnership we have with that trust. Councillor Barrett. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. This has actually been one of the most um, challenging ones for me so far. If the proposal had been to um, zero investment out, I would definitely be opposed to it. But the proposal is to moderate our level of investment and that being the case, and considering that I suppose over some time I've felt that given we are putting in public money, it would be nice to have public participation in the decision-making process around selecting artworks, I am prepared to moderate the investment this year and I would like to see us include a conversation around um, given public money partnering, there could be and should be a basis for public participation in selecting works going forward. And my longer term plan in the future is that development contributions will fund public art in this city. Um, just a point of clarification, this is a permanent cut. Am I right? What the... I'm happy if the mover is happy for us to add in for one year. Okay. It is a permanent cut unless we change that. Well, uh, sorry, is that, are you looking for... Yes, to you, Councillor. Um, my intention was that it be a permanent cut. Uh, I mean, okay. it's hard to read the room when you're not in it. Uh, but I would... I'd like to test a permanent cut, to be honest. Okay, thank you. Okay, back to you, Councillor, for right of reply. Um, yeah, thanks, colleagues, for your comments. I, you know, I have enjoyed and appreciated the work that the Sculpture Trust has done uh, up till now. There's no doubt about that. So this um, cut isn't motivated because I don't appreciate their work, uh, don't value the... Um, addition of public art to the city or anything like that. It's uh, motivated by two reasons. The first one 
is the need for us to reduce our budgets this year, uh, given the, you know, absolute a perfect storm of factors that have piled on us in trying to um, come up with a, a fair, reasonable and affordable budget. The second reason is because there were actually 16 submissions that specifically mentioned that we should cut funding to the Public Sculpture Trust. So not general submissions about the arts or um, I'm not talking about submissions about rates in general, but 16 uh, submissions that identified this as an area where people felt we could make a cut. And given that we are attempting to make some cuts, I'd prefer them to be in areas that the community has identified. I mean, when we go out to consult, that's what we say to people, isn't it? We say, look, uh, you know, if you think we should be spending less money on something, tell us. And, and people have told us. So I think we should be listening to that. And so um, it's, it's not about uh, getting rid of the programme altogether. It's about scaling it back. And, and I think that that's a measured response to uh, the submissions that we've had and to the you know, difficult times that we find ourselves in. So I'll leave the decision to you. Thank you. OK, councillors, we'll put this to the vote, please. And that has failed. Um, five votes for and ten against. Okay. We will now move to the next one. And uh, again, this is from Councillor Johnson. This is around uh, reducing operational expenditure. Um, uh, Schedule C, uh, Category 1 is around program 1246 and the three waters public education water to reduce by 41,000. Over to you, Councillor. Uh, thanks, Mr Mayor. So this is actually the only program uh, that I've proposed that we cut that are in the red high-risk impact options. Um, and this is um, about public education around reinforcing voluntary conservation scheme in summer. Um, I think we had a big public education scheme about voluntary water use uh, this year. Um, I don't think that we need 41,000 to spend on it next year. And I also think that, um, you know, the message was got out very effectively through social media posts and, um, and articles in the newspaper. Um, and I, I can't make those add up to 41,000. So um, my view would be that this is a potential saving um, and, yeah, let's uh, give it a test. Thank you. Um, so can I just get an officer comment? Um, it does seem a lot of money for um, the social media posts and everything I've seen. Is this, is this um, paid for advertising? Uh, yes, so primarily this fund is our campaign to try and get residents to save as much water as they can so we don't go into restrictions. So no, no, I think the question was, what is the money spent on? So it's paid advertising. Paid advertising. Part okay. of it is in the lead up to, but we have a contingency in there in case we do need to go into restrictions. Okay, thank you. Um, just with the officer's reply, I will support this. Um, there's other ways of messaging that... Um, uh, not um, paid advertising, so we have a, a big and large and strong uh, media team, and uh, I think, um, again, going back to those principles, um, this isn't partnered, this is us, and um, I think we can, we can do things slightly better here and slightly more prudent. Councillor Barrett. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This program has been very effective, as we saw in the um, very well-prepared sustainability review recently. Um, one of the highlights that was drawn out in the three water space was the extraordinary success. I think it was a million liters, I think it might have been a day, a million liters a day that was being saved in this city, principally in response to a well-run campaign. Now, I'd hate to think that we reward success by cutting funding before we actually have established those patterns of behavior over time in this community. And 
I accept the argument that at some point in the future there may be enough behavioral um, messaging and change that, you know, this becomes kind of people's lifestyle. But one thing that we know about behavior change is that it actually takes consistent messaging over time to actually embed those behaviors and see those conservation benefits really truly embedded in our community practice. And water conservation is an area that pays for itself many times over, not just in terms of the water treatment plant, but in terms of the whole of the three water systems. So I'd encourage you um, to vote against this so that we can maintain support for establishing a very strong water conservation culture in this community. We should not let the first burst of success get flushed down the toilet. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I am absolutely opposing this recommendation. Um, if you think back to yesterday, when we were talking about receiving the summary of submissions, um, the officer comments, there were many elected members who made reference to um, the annual budget campaign essentially being largely driven through social media and about how that shouldn't be our only option. The paid campaign that goes with water conservation efforts doesn't just cover social media, and I don't think that we should um, move on one day and then say, well, actually, this campaign we will only rely on social media. We can't put things in the newspaper, we can't put things on the radio for free. Our partnerships in the community are not that good. And so, actually, I think that we, we need to consider the difference in reach that we will have with water conservation efforts if we decide to remove the paid campaign um, from this. This now is not the time to step back, I think, on water co conservation efforts in any form. Um, preventative measures to reduce the risk of requiring water restrictions over summer is our best step. We've already heard from Councillor Barrett who, that we recently had reported the success of these measures and I don't think that we should take backward steps now. Um, back to you Councillor for right of reply. Uh, thanks Mr Mayor. Um, I certainly don't see this as a backward step, actually. I think I see this much more as having confidence in the community that the message about water conservation has been received. The fact that uh, we ran the campaign and people then saved water shows that people have changed their behaviour. And so I don't think we need to keep putting 41,000 in uh, on an annual basis to do uh, water conservation measures at all. Um, and, you know, it's... It's a frustrating business having to go through the budget line by line looking for cuts. Look, I totally get that. Um, I find it as frustrating as the next person, I can assure you. Um, but nevertheless, there are areas that we can make some uh, cutbacks on that will all add up to a lower rates increase. And, you know, for every line item that we consider, I think we all need to be asking ourselves the question, is this essential? And if it is essential, is it essential this year? Because if it's not, then that's where we need to decide that we can make a saving. So um, it is on the list of programmes that officers have identified as a potential saving uh, with some provisos. And, you know, I think that this is worth um, making this $41,000 saving this year and, and in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Right, we'll put this to the vote, please. And that has passed uh, uh, 10 votes for and five against. All right. 
I just want to, just before we go to the next one, we've just got a couple to go and then we'll break for, for morning, uh, morning tea. I just want to acknowledge, I've just been talking to the CE, acting CE, I just want to acknowledge the staff for putting up these programs. It was difficult, and in some ways they look like targets. Um, I certainly haven't treated them like that, uh, and I'm sure my colleagues haven't either. But I just want to acknowledge that the programs have been put up have been, as being tough because some of you have worked in them and on them for, for many years. So just just that needs to be acknowledged. Um, and, um, and I think it's been healthy to have the debate uh, line by line, as tedious as that may be. Um, before we break, we've just got three extras that have not been listed um, from staff and have been brought through from elected members. So we'll go through those. And the next one, I'll just bring the next one up. And this is um, from Councillor Naylor. This is around uh, committee recommends that international relations budget is reduced by $100,000, leaving 416000 included. Um, Councillor Naylor. Um, just before I start, can I just ask um, the admin staff if you could add in for one year into that recommendation? Um, this is in response to submissions who have really urged us to consider deferring or reducing non-essential items in our budget. Um, as we've debated a lot of the econom economic development um, items today, I don't believe any of them have been reduced so far. This is a specific area that I do hear comments from people in our community, especially who are struggling, saying, you know, why are we investing half a million dollars into international relations? What, what benefit do we actually get from that? And whilst I acknowledge that there is some, some benefit in being in this space, I think the direct benefit to ratepayers is really quite uh, limited. This is an area in this year, for one year only, that I think we could trim back. Um, I asked some questions in terms of the um, allocation of that budget and, budget and how that is divided up. Um, there has been some of it um, traditionally that's, that's f around student grants for travelling, and I don't think that's probably necessary this year. I think some of that, I, I mean, my concern is also, I don't think probably this is the year to be doing overseas trips. I asked that question. I'm not sure if there are but the officers came back and said that yes, there would be some overseas travel included. I don't know if this is the right year to be having overseas travel for the purpose of um, pursuing our international relations. We can certainly have meaningful interaction over Zoom meetings and the, effect, the, the overall benefit to our ratepayers in this year, I think, do not equate to the level of investment that we currently have in this space, which is around a half a million dollars. So I'm proposing this as something that we can trim back for one year only. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Look, um, again, I'm going to stick to my principles and I'm loathe to cut partnered funding. And um, the Councillor, again, I uh, understand people want to look for cuts, um, but man, this is, this is one program that has multiple layers, multiple layers. And I suppose you need to understand it too. Um, to, so it goes into, yes, economic, but absolutely being an international city is around vibrancy. And there's huge cultural um, ramifications here too. The Rangatane, the Salish Kootenai people, um, our, the, our Chinese um, and our Japanese partners as well. But it goes, the sectors that, if we cut this, we've already heard that it's um, uh, the operational resources of this is quite small. Um, this will mean cuts in salaries. So this is around education, our partners, Massey, IPU, UCOL, uh, English Teaching School and numerous schools. They've all suffered in international education. This is not the time to pull the pin. Um, it's such bad timing. It isn't, um, yeah, I won't even comment. Uh, research sector, Ritter Institute, Food HQ, Ag Research, New Zealand Plant and Food, Fonterra, all trade on us being an international city. Trade, numerous international investments here. The British with New Zealand Pharmaceuticals, the Malaysians with motor truck distributors, the Japanese with Hino trucks, 
uh, Kubota New Zealand and Toyota New Zealand head offices being in our city. Cultural, I've already explained the deep people-to-people -people connections we have, and iwi absolutely uh, participate and respect this programme. But actually it's about being an international city, and whether you understand that or not. Um, our institutions here, our people absolutely do um, understand that. And I think it, make, it really does set us apart. Um, you, you would actually, you would, dis, you would go some way to um, uh, pulling down the festival of cultures as well in this space. Because we, if we cut internationalism, we're really saying to our quite wide multicultural community, do we value you? And I think this is not the way to signal that. So I ask you to strongly vote this down. Thank you. Councillor Barham. Councillor Barham. I wasn't in the queue, I'm afraid, Mr Mayor, but Councillor Johnson is. You might be looking at her. OK, I know. I've got Councillor Johnson to come. You were in my queue here. Um, uh, uh, Councillor Hancock. Yeah, thanks, uh, Mr Mayor. Look, um, I, I'm not going to support this. Um, the reality is is that uh, we need to invest in uh, our relationships with, uh, with um, um, overseas um, uh, countries, uh, sister cities and so on. Um, this is really about um, certainly opening and preparing ourselves for the post-COVID era. Um, and the reality is, is that this actually brings economic uh, benefit to the city, which equals economic benefit to the ratepayer. So um, it's kind of a bit of a circular argument, and um, so I won't be uh, supporting it. Thank you. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I'm opposing this based on the comments we heard from the officer yesterday that... Um, the reduction in budget would equate to either uh, effectively not being able to do anything or staff redundancies. Um, and so I, I don't support the reduction of um, the budget. We've just built capacity in this space with borders opening up. Uh, we know that international students are returning to the city in semester two. Um, I think actually we're just gearing up again. Um, and, and the other aspect is, is that why would it be cut just for one year um, it is so difficult to um, recruit great people into these roles. Why would we risk either them not being able to do anything functional within their role or for them to be made redundant um, for 12 months? So um, I won't support this. Uh, Councillor Johnson. Uh, thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, yes, it's... <laughs> I really uh, don't agree with people that say that we can't make a reduction in spending in this particular programme. Um, any aspect of council spending, when you look at it, um, you can normally find um, some area of saving. And to say somehow that international re relations is special and can't be cut back, when we're cutting back, um, you know, uh, heritage advisory, we're cutting back uh, development contributions to the community. We're cutting back, um, you know, deferring citywide uh, waste and all the rest of it. I don't think international relations uh, is special in any way that it should be protected from a reduction. Um, and I do reject some of the more dramatic comments that have been made about um, the message that it sends. I think uh, re reducing spending in an area doesn't send the message that um, the city is closed for business. Um, the fact of us being an international city is not reliant on the um, bottom line of dollars that we put into the international relations budget. And I've never really uh, been convinced that we get good value for the half a million dollars that we put into this. International relations is done at... Um, it's done at the national level. And I, you know, I, I'm not sure that this is really a, a good value spend for council. So I understand that it pays for overseas trips and, and you know, people like to do that. Uh, but uh, I don't think that this is a priority at the moment. So um, I think um, we should be looking at all areas for cuts. Uh, as Councillor Naylor pointed out, economic development, although we've put up some cuts so far, has, has not had a single one. So it will be interesting to see if this one succeeds. Thank you. Councillor Harpeter. 
Thanks, Mr. Mayor. I won't be supporting this. Um, international relations for the city, um, we've had our borders shut, so we haven't had international students or people coming into the city. That's affected recruitment. It's also affected our institutions. We know that um, UCO is down by 4,000 students. We know that Massey hasn't had students on its campus. And we know that IPU hasn't had students on its campus. That affects our economy. It affects everybody around the city. So I think I, what this role does is it works with partnerships around, and it opens doors. And it opens doors for the um, schools. It opens do doors for the institutions. And that's what this role, this, this function does for the city council. So by cutting and slashing its budget, it, it limits its opportunity to be able to do that. So we, we can't be seen to be doing that. It just It's a good function to have for the City Council. It's good for opening those doors for the Council, but also for a further afield for Wellington as well. So I don't think it's the time to be shutting, uh, cutting this budget, so I won't be supporting this, this um, recommendation. Councillor Beatty. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, totally agree with Councillor Harpetter. Um, you know, we've got places for about 5,000 students and so far only we've only got 431 come into the country and I think people don't realise that you take IPU on its own, it pumps $10 million into the, into the Palmerston North and re region's economy. So we definitely need the resource and again, um, the Deputy Mayor, if this means redundancies, we d we're just... Under, underpinning everything that we wanted to achieve through, the, through these budgets. So I know half a million dollars sounds a lot, but when you, when you think of, as I say, $10 million being pumped in just from IPU and Massey, and, and it just runs through the whole, the, the whole um, economics of the city. So I, th I definitely think we should support it. OK, write a reply back to you, Councillor Naylor. Thank you. This has, had, has been quite an emotive um, discussion and certainly I'd like to just correct a few statements that have been made. Um, the breakdown that staff gave us in terms of this budget said that remuneration relates to 230,000 of it. That's less than half. So it's not correct for people to presume that staff will be made redundant um, or that there'll be staff cuts or, or that there will be salary cuts. I think it's really important that elected members don't just jump to incorrect assumptions about a reduction in a budget. This budget last year was 466,000. It's proposed- So point of order, Mr. Mayor, that's not an assumption. That was a information given by staff yesterday. Yeah, it was actually. Um, I will go by the information that staff have given me in, in regards to the answers to questions. Answers to questions were it was 80,000 was the uh, resource level. The rest was overheads and salaries. Yeah, OK. So everyone has been provided this information. Remuneration, 230,000. Corporate overhead allocation, 201,000. Operational budget, 85. I might just get the officer just to... So it's just not um, councillors debating. Yeah, to confirm, the controllable budget is only $80,000. The rest is salaries. Uh, the overhead is, is effectively the overheads for the whole of str the strategic planning unit are allocated across divisions rather on a pro rata basis. So the overhead budget you can effectively, um, it's not representative of money that is spent in international relations. Um, so for instance, the, the, the equivalent overhead budget for the planning team, which is much larger, is the same. It's just split across the divisions. So the staff, the, the salary, uh, the, the, the budget is salaries, uh, 230 and 80 thousand dollars of operational expenditure, which is for travel, scholarships, and also the international education function, which came back from CEDA. Back to you, Councillor. Um, thanks for the clarification. Can I just ask: the, Is that area fully recruited to currently? Yes. Okay. So, um, just going back to some of the comments that have been made. Um, Someone suggested that there would be no festival of cultures. I don't even know how anyone would have got to that conclusion from this. Um, the events budget that was included in our Schedule C 
um, recognising that we've increased 160,000 to that budget was not proposed to change by any elected member, as far as I'm aware. So the events budget, um, I'm, I'm sure that Festival of Cultures as a highly um, valued event would not be changed if we adjust this budget. This is a budget that has quadrupled in size in recent years, and I'm still hearing questions from our community about what value it has to them. I acknowledge the information that's been provided. If the seconder was willing to adjust that 100,000 to 85, I would perhaps just adjust that given the updated information that's just been provided. Um, can I do that at this point, Mr Mayor? Um, yes, you can. Just because there, I mean, there has been some updated information. So I... Oh, hold on, hold on. Is the seconder willing to do that? Yeah, thank you. Okay, so given, you know, the, there is the economic development space, as I said earlier, has got many millions that we invest in it. If we go through and identify perhaps what areas we could trim back, I think this is one that we could trim back for one year. 85,000, that's money that's spent on overseas travel, that's money that's spent on supporting students to travel. That I guess for one year, I think that is something that we can reduce, reduce, and I'd urge you to support it. Councillors, I will allow anybody else to come back in because the motion has changed if they want to speak. I'd love to, but I'm going to leave it. Does <laughs> anybody else wish to speak? Uh, Councillor Barrett. Uh, thank you. Just briefly, um, for me, this makes even less sense than what was up there before in that now we're actually paying two people full time to sit on their hands. Why would we do that? Right, we will, we will vote, please. Do I get a right of reply? Uh, you've had your right of reply, Councillor. Okay, but you opened it up for other comments. Um, point of order, Mr Mayor, you've the allowed motion. the comment, so the, um, if you've allowed the comment, then it goes back to the mover to, for a final right of reply. It's the Chair's decision, but I'll allow it. Thank you. I do just want to make the comment that we're not... This, this resolution does not necessarily um, force staff to sit on their hands. The capacity still sits with the Chief Executive to prioritise the investment across the organisation and prioritise where there is staff allocation. Giving an overall budget of 430-odd thousand is still a significant investment into this space, and I think elected members should consider that in their decision. Okay, councillors, we will now vote, please. That has failed, five votes for and ten against. Right, we will move to the next one, which has uh, again um, come from the floor, from uh, office, uh, sorry, from councillors, not officers. So this is program uh, 1273, and this is around um, reducing the Palmy Unleashed program to $40,000, and this again is from Councillor Naila. Um, and once again, apologies um, to Edmund if I could just add in for one year to that resolution. Once again, this is just um, a suggestion that has arisen through this mission process um, that I read somewhere, um, that, that you know the community had identified it as an area that could be reduced, so this is a partial, um, a part reduction of that item. Um, Councillors, just a bit of clarification because I asked a few questions before this came up. The program is for 77,000 and can I just, it, it's, it's, um, it's resource, it's salaries, isn't it? So there's no, there's no, the money isn't, yeah, okay, it's salaries, okay, thank you. So look, on that basis, I won't be supporting this. Um, appreciate if it was something that we could, again, going back to my principles of what we can do internally, um, I would... 
um, I would look to support this, but it actually is already committed in salaries, so I can't support that. Okay, back to you, Councillor, for right of reply. Thank you. I'm uh, sorry, Mr. sorry. Mayor, I was in the Councillor Johnson, you popped in late. I, I appreciate it can be difficult to um, spot that people online have got their hands up. Um, I, uh, the comment I would make on this is that uh, there seems to be a, a sort of a narrative coming through that we won't make any cuts that result in uh, reductions of paid positions or reductions in salaries. And I, I think that that's a, that's a position that I'm not willing to, to support. There surely will be occasions where a programme has less relevance or a programme has, uh, you know, we've decided that that programme has lesser priority, where if we need to reduce the budget, then inevitably that's going to reduce the, uh, the capacity of staffing that's required for it. So I just don't think we can automatically say, oh, well, this is for salaries, so we won't, we won't ever cut it. We need to look at the value of the programme and, and decide on that basis. So um, I, I will be supporting this. And um, I think um, we just need to be careful making a sort of a blanket decision that we'll never support anything that results in reduction of salaries or positions. Thank you. There's no other speakers. Back to you, Councillor Naylor. Yeah, thank you. Um, I agree with the comments that have just been made by Councillor Johnson. But also, we need to remember the organisation currently has 126 vacancies. So I think we're actually helping staff if we suggest some areas to reduce the workload, to say so many times there's things that get added and added and added, and that puts a lot of pressure on staff, a lot of pressure on the budget, and we've made a decision to um, reduce that envelope slightly to staff. I think we need to assist that process by actually reducing some of the workload. Um, I think the Chief Executive has the capacity to arrange the staff in such a way to deliver on the workload. And that is the way our budget is structured. We have programs that deliver an outcome. Whether a staff member is attached to it or not is something that is for the Chief Executive to determine. But I think in the, the current environment, having a reduction of 40,000 is, is a sensible way to respond to the submissions that have been made. Thank you, Councillor. Right, we will vote, please. And that is passed. Eight votes for and seven against. Okay. We will now go to our last, our last one um, of this uh, schedule. And um, uh, that is around program 1899. Uh, around aquatic facilities and water recreation preliminary feasibility study of 51,000 is deferred until the 23-24 year. Uh, Councillor Naylor, back to you. Thank you. Once again, um, this is an item that I looked at and thought if we've got to reduce the workload for this year, um, perhaps this is something that could wait a year. Um, in the sports facilities review, it had this outlined in year two or three, which is 22-23 or 23-24. So from what I, what I ha can tell, um, there should not be um, too much to lose from deferring this for a year. I also think we need to be mindful of the amount of feasibility studies um, that we're doing um, and consider the capital, potential capital investment that may arise out of the, some of those studies and ensure that we do them in such a way that it's staggered or spread rather than doing, a, well, you know, there's a lot of investigations and feasibility studies happening in the next uh, financial year and I just think perhaps is probably more than what is reasonable to deliver on. Thank you, Councillor. Could I just, when you, or just some of the comments about um, um, helping with the workload, is, is there, could I get a comment from officers, please? Is there a problem with the workload in this, in this, particular, in this particular area? Uh, 
there isn't. So this will be delivered by the um, strategic, uh, the strategy and policy team, which is uh, fully staffed up, um, and this work would be done uh, by consultants. Yeah. Um, the, one, the one thing I would say um, about this program particularly is, is we've talked a lot in the last day and a half about the weight of submissions on the annual budget. Um, I just remind elected members the weight of submissions on this topic as part of the LTP. Yeah, that was going to be in my second comment. So, look, um, I again appreciate what um, the councillors are trying to do here in the mover and seconder, um, but I do remind you the LTP, um, who who that the, the great weight of um, submissions was um, around having a look at our aquatic facilities and actually. Um, what we're doing in that rec water recreation space. So we pushed this to another year. We'll be pushing it again to another year. So the argument is, um, uh, does that really um, support our community? So I won't be supporting it um, because I do think it needs to, the work does need to be done. Okay, Councillor Harpeter. Thanks, Mr Mayor. I won't be supporting this, so I'm channeling the chair of uh, Sport and Rec on this one. Um, I think that if this, this was one thing that was really, as we all know, everybody came and um, thumped the table over this, so I do think that it's something that we need to keep, keep on moving. We've also had a um, recent workshop on um, sport and recreation facilities and I just think that it's something that we need to keep moving on and um, keep our discussion going for um, the aquatic facilities for the city so I think we need to get this feasibility study so that we can actually have the information and we know then we can then make some decisions about what we want to do for next year so I, I will not be supporting this, thank you. All right, that's no more questions. Back to you, Councillor, for right of reply. Yeah, just to remind councillors that I'm not suggesting this shouldn't be done, but that it simply is deferred for one year. And where that will benefit the ratepayers is if $51,000, is, um, as the officer said, would require a consultant to complete that work, then that's $51,000 savings in this year. And that, I mean, I think that's a big part of what we're trying to achieve here today. Thank you. Right, we'll vote, please. Um, and that is um, failed, three votes for and 12 against. Okay, councillors, um, we will have a break, a well-earned break. So look, um, we won't come back into, for those online, we'll be back online at 20 past 11. Thank you.
Uh, kia ora tato. Welcome back, everybody. I hope you enjoyed your coffee or cup of tea or, or whatever you were having. Um, and we're back into our next round. So before I go to the officers, to Cam and Steve, um, what, what we will do, um, councillors, is we'll look at um, our uh, capital programs um, and then we'll go and there'll be a bit of a presentation around that. They'll give you an opportunity to ask any questions. Uh, then we'll go to the capital new. Um, then we'll do capital renewals. Then we'll have a look at carry forwards, and then we'll do a bit of a catch all at the end just to, to, to finalise anything else that's been missed. So I think that's the best way to approach it, um, and it, um, it's still going to be a few hours. So, look, we're going to endeavour to break in about an hour's time for lunch at 12.30. That will hopefully get a lot of the questions out of the way, and then we'll start ripping into the um, motions that are on the table. Okay, over to you. Did you want to comment, Deputy Mayor? Sorry, Mr Mayor, I just wondered whether we might be able to also have an update on the rating impact um, from this morning's changes, and even if it might be possible to get that regularly updated on the whiteboard and possibly on the chat for our participants online, just so we can kind of keep an eye on it as we go. So I'll look to the officers to do that. Somebody... The up, up in the gallery there, Grant, you can... OK, thank you. Yeah. Excellent. We can, right. We can probably give a, um, a, a very indicative indication at the moment, which is sitting around about 6%, but, but obviously that, that we have some work to do with the, with the 2 million reduction that we spoke of, got approved yesterday. So um, excluding that, we're sitting at 6%. Okay, that's good. Thank you. All right, um, over to you, Cam, Steve and Sarah. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Yes, uh, I've got Sarah with me, Chief Infrastructure Officer, to help with this presentation, um, given that the, the, the bulk of the capital program sits in the infrastructure area. What we have uh, endeavoured to do um, with the capital program and the way we've presented it to you is to, to try and give you uh, where, no, where there could be options if you did seek um, reductions by giving you some context around um, the pro uh, uh, basically a prioritisation context um, where, where we might have some things already under contract or in train um, up to um, others that, that haven't started um, and and um, at the lower end of the priority list uh, from our perspective. Um, we've also updated an additional um, appendix, appendix uh, Schedule C, uh, G, sorry, I think it was called, pen, uh, Schedule G, which was to give a bit of context around the stage, uh, stage in the life cycle of, of the projects um, that some of these are in, whether they're in um, design, procurement or under, uh, under contract and so forth, just to give some additional context for your deliberations today. Um, I will pass over to Sarah to give a bit more of an um, overview of the capital programme as a whole. Thank you, Cam. Um, good morning, Mayor, Deputy Mayor and Councillors. Um, so... This morning, um, I'm going to start by speaking to you, before we talk about the carry forwards, um, I'm going to start by speaking to you about um, where we are with the capital programme. Um, you'll, you'll recall that um, we've been doing quite a lot of work on deliverability, and last year, last financial year, we actually um, took a, a hard look at what was deliverable in the COVID environment and reduced our recommended last year's budget um, and did some carry forwards. And we've done the same again this year. So the starting point of our um, 
year two of the LTP budget was meant to be 74 million, of which 45 million was growth and 29 million approximately um, was, oh sorry, programs and growth, 29 million, 45 million programs. Um, We've done. The, we've looked at growth. As you'll recall, we, we talked about separating out growth last year because growth is driven by someone other than us normally. It's driven by the developer market, so we have less control over the ability to deliver. But when it sits in our overall reported capital programme, it looks bad because it looks like it hasn't been delivered when actually it's sitting there as a signal waiting for... Um, developers to come to us and say, you know, we're now ready for this to happen. Um, so we've actually changed how we report this year so that you can see that broken down more clearly and so that you can see when you look at our annual proposed budget prior to consultation, how much of the growth we'd already moved out um, because of, of what's happening in the market at the moment and the fact that we've moved our proposed program budget uh, as well for the, the realism of what we can deliver. We know how important, we really know how important infrastructure is for the people of Palmy. Um, we have really tried to be realistic about what we can deliver, not just now, but going forward. So we've done quite a lot of work. We've changed quite a lot of how we do things over the last couple of years to lock in more our ability to deliver. You, you agreed to the design panel fairly recently. Um, thank you. Uh, that, that will really help us um, get work into procurement in a timely, um, well-planned manner. The Fulton Hogan contract locks in a lot of our delivery, and we're very fortunate in that we have our own in-house workforce um, delivering quite a lot of our work for us, which gives us a lot more certainty than most councils in the current environment. Every year, we look at um, what's called the hockey stick curve, where by the end of the financial year, um, we have a hockey stick to spend. The impact of COVID has been to move our hockey stick so that we've got three months, effectively, of delivery in the next financial year. So you'll see we've got quite a bit of carry forward, but it's all, almost all locked into play. So it's, it's either fully contracted already or in the last stages of procurement before it goes to contract. So we've got really deep certainty of our ability to deliver the carry forward that's in this year's programme in the first few months in the main. Um, so you can have confidence that, that that won't impact on the work that we're planning to deliver for the 22-23 year. Our contract managers will be focusing on delivering the carry forward, but everyone else will be focusing on the work for that year. Things that have made a difference for us are the bundling of contracts and bundling of work going forward, the, the better planning, including the design panel, the scaling up of Fort and Hogan, um, and the, the starting from a more realistic point about what we can do. Um, so we have, with the, the, the work programme for this year, we have gone through and categorised in terms of, of um, four being the easiest to stop, zero being the most difficult to stop of the work that's in play, which we hope will be useful to you in decision making. But I really wanted to start by reassuring you that there's been an awful lot of work over the last year in how we deal with the impacts of COVID to make sure that we can continue to be realistic about what we propose to deliver and that we can lock it in um, to give us and you and the ratepayers certainty of delivery. Cam's alluded to um, Schedule G, which actually takes you through um, our carry-forward commitments and our 23-24 work that's already committed. Um, as of today, our carry-forwards are around about 90% committed. Um, as of today, our work for next year's programme is around about 45% already 
um, in contract or in procurement. Um, so that's pretty much half of next year's work is, is, is ready to push the button on, um, which gives us a lot more security about how we deliver next year. Schedule E has taken you through the, the carry forward assumptions in more detail. Um, but I hope that the information that we've provided you has, has given you um, not just good information, but, but information about how much we've already locked in and how much there is available to, um, to deliver, bearing in mind that, that yeah, we now are uh, giving you the best information we can to make decisions about what you wish to stop. Thank you. Okay, I might just uh, I might just open it for a few questions. I see one online, and before I go to Councillor Johnson, could could I just ask a question? The and it's to do with capital programs. That that first tranche of three waters funding that we got, I think it was around nine point something million. We're still to complete. We must be getting close to completing that. Um, have we picked up the remaining one point nine two million dollars from the government? The remaining 1.2, well, when you say remaining, can you explain to me what so you mean? So we were, we were allocated um, nine point, and again, you, you should know this, the, the figure, whatever the figure is, 9.6 or 9.5 million. Um, in one of our last reports, we were at risk of not picking up the last oh, okay. component of that money because we hadn't completed the work. Have we completed that work or is it in train? And will we get that, that funding which could possibly be lost? The work is still in train. Um, uh, uh, we will definitely get the funding for the work we do. There was about um, 50,000 that we were looking at whether we could move it to um, something else to enable it to be spent. But that work is still in train and continuing um, with the, the, the conversations with the DIA ongoing. When will it be completed? We are aiming to complete all of it this financial year. Okay. Oh, that's, thank you. That's great. Um, just in terms of renewals for the past year, what was our total renewals budget? Our total renewals budget for um, this 21-22 year was about $29.6 million. Okay, and what was our total capital new budget? Um, our total capital new budget was, um, the revised for COVID budget was 61.8 million, of which 18.2 was growth. Okay, and in terms of our renewals, um, what are we looking at? I mean, I, I, I know that some of that might move a little bit with the year, finishing, but as we've sort of got 30 days of that to go, um, what are we looking at with total renewals, um, money spent and percentage of completion? Okay. Um, as of today, the, the percentage that we've spent is 78% of our renewals. Uh, we are proposing a, a carry forward of um, 3.4 million, which we have... Um, almost all of under contract already. Um, and that is that COVID impact, just delay in the programme, because normally we spend um, renewal very, very securely. It's just having our own in-house workforce stood down for a few months, etc. It's just dragged the programme on a bit. And capital, what, what have, what's the percentage with capital new? What's the percentage of our spend? The, okay, so we've, the, we've, not spent um, almost all of the growth money. So there's there's about um, yeah 18 million of growth that we spent 400,000 in growth this year of of a budget of 18.2 million. So almost all of that is is carried forward. Um, of the um, of the other, which was about 40 um, 43 million, we've spent. Um, we believe that we've spent 43.6, sorry, we've spent about 40.8. Um, well, no, we've spent about um, 
14.8 uh, with 26 million locked in for delivery, 94% um, of which now is committed. Okay. So that's, that, again, that, that hockey stick yep. just moving slightly into the next financial year. I understand that, but the original question was how much have we spent percentage-wise? Is it 20%, 30% of capital new in the past year? Okay. Um, so uh, without my phone in front of me to do the yeah, calculations... Look, come, with that's fine. You can come back to me on that, but as long as I get that answer... Um, and, and the dollar value, whatever that is, and understand that you've got stuff um, committed going forward. Okay, that's me. Um, Councillor Johnson. Uh, thanks, Mr Mayor. I've got a question about Schedule F. Is now the time to ask it? Um, is, sorry, I'm, there's papers everywhere. Schedule F is what? It's the um, proposed amendments to capital expenditure programmes. It's on page 157 of our agenda. Yes. Um, OK, so my question is about the proposed updated... Uh, increase in expenditure for the animal shelter, which is Programme 1552. And um, given that I know that there is a motion on the table later on to uh, cut this back, I'd like some officer comment on the reasons for the increase, um, whether or not there's been any change in scope, and what the implications are if we don't um, agree to the increase. Thank you. And I'll ask Bryce Hosking, the, the GM for property, to speak, please. We've been out for tender uh, for the animal shelter, um, and there's a paper to uh, come to council on the 29th of June to uh, potentially award that contract. Um, there has been cost escalation um, in, in that program. So what we wanted to do is flag some of that to you here. The amount that you're seeing is not an exact figure. Um, we're continuing to work on uh, value engineering items, looking at the scope. Um, so the scope hasn't increased from where it was previously at all. Uh, if anything, it's probably decreasing in terms of uh, considering different kinds of materials, where we can be getting efficiencies and savings. And we're continuing to work through that process even today, um, to lock that in. So councillors will have some confidence on the 29th of June that that is, uh, is certain of prices we, we've got and basically we've explored all avenues to be getting as sharp a price as possible. So um, just the last part of my question was, what are the implications of council passing a motion today to um, insist on retaining the original 2.1 million as opposed to accepting the proposed increase? Well, the paper will be coming to Council on the 29th of June uh, to award that contract anyway. Um, so if it's passed to not accept the, uh, I guess, heads up increase, then you know, ultimately Council would still be making that decision on the 29th of June anyway. Uh, and in reality, if they wanted to accept the contract, they would be putting in an increased cost anyway. OK, thank you for that, Bryce. Um, I guess my question was really around the implications uh, of refusing to accept the, up, the um, increase in cost. Does it mean that the project wouldn't be able to go ahead? The decision whether to proceed with the construction through the, uh, based on the current tenders will be had on the 29th of June. So the implication today would simply be that you would be removing the, the increase heads up budget essentially and you'd be making that decision solely on the 29th of June anyway. Okay, thank you. Um, Bryce, just while you're standing, does the dog pound include the education space? No, Council had already made the decision to remove that from the scope. Right, okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Naylor. Thank you. Um, 
I do have a few questions. Just starting with the um, size of the overall capital program on 20, page 26, it um, shows that it's got up to 101 million. Um, in terms of trying to determine what is realistic to deliver, I guess I'm looking at last year's delivery was 63 million and the year before 53 million. So if we were to deliver on 101, that would be like a 61% increase. How realistic do you think the size of the overall program is in terms of delivery? Thank you, Councillor Naylor. Um, I know that's a really pertinent and important question, and that was why we wrote Schedule G, because Schedule G really helps demonstrate um, how realistic we think that is. So, so that budget is made up of um, quite a lot of carry forward, um, 25, uh, 29 million carry forward, uh, for example, which we know we've, we've locked in um, around about 90% of already to deliver over the first few months. Um, of the remaining value, which is 40 million of, of capital new program work, we've already locked in 44% of that. So the, 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 whole, the, the aim of the schedule was to show you how much of that we've already locked in. Now, I appreciate that in the past, um, the, the capital programme hasn't been delivered and a lot of the changes that we've been putting in place, although they've been affected by COVID, have been to give us much more certainty of delivering that programme. They, they are bundling of work to make it, it uh, more rewarding for both parties to work through procurement. Um, they are being very clear what can be delivered by our in-house workforce to maximise what we can rely on with our in-house workforce, locking in the road maintenance contract, but also particularly planning and designing our work much earlier so that we can go to the market earlier so that we can get that certainty of procurement during the year. So although we have been affected by COVID, we've, we've been carrying that work behind the scenes, particularly to lock in the procurements. Okay. I, yeah, okay. I'll just move on to some of the specific questions I had. Um, just coming back to the animal shelter, which Councillor Johnson mentioned, um, the 1.77 carry forward in that programme, is that in addition to the 3.33 for this year's programme. So is it actually a $5.1 million? Correct. Okay. So um, I guess, the, thank you, that's good to know. Um, with some of the other programmes, I guess I've just been trying to, is there anywhere in the papers that identifies programmes in their t totality, like as in the carry forward plus what's in the 22-23 year? So I've, I've just struggled sometimes to connect the dots between those two things, where there's a programme, there's, there's, there's the carry forward from this year, as well as the programme amount for next year. Is there anywhere that... No, so we just have to find and match it up ourselves. So just in terms of that issue, I guess around the streets for people, um, CBD streets for people 2122, on page 87 or in... in Schedule G, it's got the $600,000 for design, and then also in terms of the 23-24 component, the 2.924 million. So that 600 is in addition to the 2.9, is it? So is that like a $3.5 million program? I'll pass on to Sue Kelly, uh, the manager of the PMO, to answer. Sorry. Sue Kelly, manager of the PMO. Yes, that's correct. It's, it's additional. Um, but the carry forward has been split over two years. So I didn't correct? quite catch that. No, uh, it's proposed to potentially be split over two years. Sorry. Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Carry forward is proposed to be split over two years. So is 600 
the 600 in design that I'm looking at on page 87, is that half of the carry forward? Um, that's a portion of the carry forward, and it's to complete the design work in the next year. Okay, so if um, Council decided to defer the capital programme for, for the 22-23 year, is the 600 design portion contracted? So yes. we'd need to keep that part, but we could defer the 2.9, is that? That's correct. Okay, just wanted to get that clear. Thank you. Um, I have a couple of questions related to Schedule F. Oh, one, I think one's already been answered. So the bottom of page 157 is an item two point, uh, sorry, 2124, Urban Growth Ashurst Transport, that didn't have any budget in our draft annual budget, but it's proposed to include 2.8 million. And I'm just wondering if there was submis any submissions requesting that specific Sweet. inclusion. Yes, I, I'll, I'll answer that one, but I'll, I'll pass on to, to Hamish for detail if needed. Um, we realised that um, uh, the this is for Custom Street in Ashurst, yep. uh, which is an industrial area which has um, been waiting for uh, paving for some time. Um, the the work in the draft annual plan had moved, had been moved out an extra year by mistake. So we've moved it back in because it is actually very urgent work. So the carry forward was for work that we were doing this year, but the, the, the rest of it is moving it back from, it had mistakenly been put into the 23, 24 year when it's, it's actually desperately urgent work to do now. When you say mistake, so it's not a, change of decision? No, it was just a financial uh, error if it went in the wrong year. Financial for, by us, not by the finance team, but it went in the wrong year. So it was one that council confirmed as being in the deferrals though. So it was still decided by council to defer that in the March debate. And hence we're proposing bringing it back in this one. Okay. Do we, do we need a submission, if something hasn't been included in the draft, do we need a submission to justify its inclusion now? No. No, you, you have the option to, as, as you would in putting forward new programmes, you still have the option to, to put new things into the budget without submission. So we've always been told that we can't put anything in the programme unless there's a submission that... Uh, the, the, the difference here, though, is this was in your 10-year plan. Oh, yeah. yeah so, Councillor, there has been quite a lot of dialogue with um, the residents and, and businesses of Custom Street, as uh, Hamish and I have experienced in the last week. Um, and this work is absolutely needed. Okay. Um, yeah. And it's actually on page 25 of, of the report, um, midway through the text there, um, okay. highlighting it. Um, and just moving to the capital renewal programme, um, the, on page 26 in the summary there, it says that there's 4.2 million carry forwards. Um, and you mentioned that there was only 3.4. Has that changed? or? Um. My, my apologies, my, my, um, that was me misreading the oh, numbers. Yeah. 3.4 million is um, already committed. Um, I think it's four, um, yeah, it was 4.2 on page 85. It's 4.2 as of the yeah. date of the paper that was carried forward. My apologies, that was me misreading my notes. No, that's okay. Just wanted to check in case it had changed. So in terms of the capital programme, Cameron... You made some opening remarks yesterday about reductions of oh, deferrals that they wouldn't um, affect the rates because of the three-year rolling average. Um, so in terms of any impact to rates, that any changes of capital renewals, would they have to be reduction, a reduction in spend? Through you, Mr. Mayor, um, the uh, the way in which the renewal part of the capital program is funded is on a three-year rolling average. So, um, 
if, if I used a couple of examples, one being that if you had a one-off renewal program in the upcoming year and you deferred it one year, you would still be funding it in the three-year rolling renewal average. If you decided to move an ongoing renewal program out um, a year and it had follow-on budgets, well then we would be we would look to be moving the program out a year and that would have whatever whatever the the third year of that program was as a impact on rates. Okay. Essentially. So when we've got a carry forward the size of four point two million, how will that have an impact on the deliverability of this year's capital renewal program? and perhaps next year if, if we def keep deferring that kind of level out? Through the Chair, we, we very much looked at that in terms of, of deliverability. Renewals are, are done by our in-house workforce for the Three Waters in the main, um, by Fulton Hogan for the roading work, um, and some other contractors that we tend to sort of lock in fairly early. So. As I said, our aim, just because of the, the illness curve, our aim is to deliver most of this in the, the very early period of the year um, and to not force then a carry forward in other years because we're conscious that with renewals, what we're doing is, is maintaining the, really, the, the stuff that we really don't want to fail. So we, we're really actively aiming to, to pick up the stuff that we didn't manage to do this year because it does have quite an impact on our risk. Okay. I think that's all from me. Thank you. Um, Councillor Harpeter. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, thank you, Sarah. Um, just as to follow up on what Councillor Naylor was asking you about the Streets for People programme, programme 2122, I um, heard what the officers said about the design that had been committed. Um, we've had quite a bit of feedback from community about them not wanting us to spend on this program. So I just wondered what had been committed of the 2.9 million going forward. Has there been any contract commitments? Um, there has been, we've been working um, through the chair Thank you, Councillor Harpeter. Um, another really good question. So we've been working on, um, on early contractor involvement with one of the local contractors, but for a, that's, that's a separate small, you know, 25K-ish sort of contract. Um, other than that, none of that has been committed. Um, there's actually a paper coming to the Chamber... June? in June um, with, a, with the results of a procurement there for council to make a decision on if you don't make a decision, or if you make a decision today, one way or the other. Um, but there's nothing committed today other than the design and a very small contract for early contractor involvement. So uh, going forward with that, what if um, we wanted to change the design um, I understand you've done 300k of the design going forward, but what if we wanted a different design for the next tranche and it wasn't to look exactly the same as... Councillor, you're talking about a sort of a change of scope, are you? Mm -hmm. yeah. That it wasn't so expensive. Um, there's been quite a... There's been quite a lot of value engineering through the design. We've been working with WT Partnership on value engineering the design as it goes to to help reduce the costs where they can be reduced. If if council wanted to stop and us to re-scope the design, um, the design is, is predominantly done, which is why we're able to be negotiating the procurement and the um, and the value engineering as we go. But it would be um, it would be possible. It, it, it would be possible, but but we have done quite a lot of work on value engineering with some really, or well, you know, WT partners. You know, they're top notch people in this space. So so we've been very much relying on their expertise here to to value engineer as we go through because of the finite budget that there is. 
for streets for people. Okay, but just there could be an opportunity to make these changes if we needed to. There could, but I'm not sure. What, what, sorry, what I'm trying to communicate is I'm not sure what the impact of the change will be, given that we've done quite a lot of work in that value engineering space. OK, thank you. Um, Councillor Denison. Thank you, Mr Mayor. My question pertains to the animal shelter. Just when it was updated saying we're going to have the report come on the 29th of June. Is that the earliest it could come? I was wondering if the 15th of June at the Committee of Council meeting was a possibility or some other committee before that. The answer's possibly. Um, we, we are continuing, as I said earlier, to uh, really refine and look at all of the value engineering options we possibly can and, and that is continuing as I said literally in a meeting today um, with our project managers um, and I suppose really the, the idea of taking it to the 29th was so we could give elected members the most confidence we could that we have lifted every stone, looked at every single option we could to get the best price to deliver the best um, scoped outcome we could. By pulling that forward, um, potentially there could be a stone or two, to use that analogy, we haven't opened and turned. Okay. Okay. So the stone unturned is looking to reduce the 1.2-odd figure that's in the movement figure in our papers, is that obviously what you're trying to improve? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So we're looking at, um, is there different cladding options? Is there different flooring materials? It's all those kind of discussions that we're having and have already had. And really what I'm expressing is I uh, want to make sure uh, that we have looked at all of those elements and refined them and locked in the best price we can for everything. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just while you're standing, Bryce, thank you. Um, has there been, uh, and I appreciate that, um, you know, the the reason for the questions here is obviously because, you know, the the cost, massive cost escalations in this project, and understand we're, we're in a difficult position. But has there been any external, like a WT over the top of this to run their eye through things? WT are involved in this oh, project. OK, well, that gives me... That gives me some confidence. Um, also, what is the total cost? Because there's lots of pockets of funding. What is the total cost of the dog pound now? Well, the, the final price hasn't been uh, exactly confirmed, but for a total project cost, we're probably looking circa 6.8 mil. Um, so whilst majority of that will be delivered uh, next financial year, Hence the signalled $5 million odd figure. Um, there will be a couple of months, sort of July, August in uh, 2023, uh, which will finalise those costs. So the other thing we were looking at in terms of uh, trying to get as accurate costs as possible was also seeing if we could forecast that over a couple of financial years to, to spread that burden a little bit. OK. OK, look, thanks, thanks for that. Um, Councillor Barrett. Thanks, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Just a further question around the streets for people. Um, in that <clears throat> particular part of the project, um, my observations of the intersection at uh, Broadway and, and Square East is that it's um, fatigued, to say the least. Um, how much life has that got left in it? And if we defer, what are the implications in terms of needs for um, maintenance and other sort of short-term plaster-type fixes? That's a very good question. Um, thank you, Sue Kelly, manager of PMO. Um, in terms of the money that we were talking about deferring, um, or as carry forward, um, the two points, was it two point four? 2.4, um, that doesn't include that intersection. Um, in terms of the condition of the intersection, um, 
that might be one that Hamish wishes to respond to. Uh, good morning. Um, I'm Shreenby, uh, GM Transport and Development. Um, in terms of the general condition of the intersection, um, with it not being part of the, um, the project that so was talked you through, um, it would, would go into the general renewal program, um, which we are getting a bit of a bow wave of, of works in that space. Certainly uh, across the network, we're getting big projects like that. So, yes. uh, thank you. So, can I just then reconfirm scope? Because my understanding was that that's the next stage did include. Um, Broadway and Square East intersection. I believe that's added um, into a later stage of the project. Right, okay, thank you. Okay, all right. Um, so that's exhaust. Oh no, uh, Councillor Naylor. Um, do you want us to take capital renewal questions now or later? Um, we can do them now. Okay, so I just do have just a few um, related to some specific items. Um, predominantly ones that relate to capital renewals where they've, there's some carry forward as well as budget in for this year. Um, so one example, I'm looking at Schedule E on page 153. And the... Programme 1964 Arena Indoor Stadium Sound System Replacement has a $150,000 carry forward, but there's also an $154,000 programme for this year. So would that mean that there would be 300000 spent on that this year, or is there a view to push out this year's... 154,000 at all. It's looking good afternoon, uh, Mr. Mayor and Councillors. Uh, John Lynch, Venues Manager. Uh, the, the sound system, we want the budget in one year, so the carry forward from this year was so that the whole budget was available in one go. It's not a project we can uh, divvy up and uh, buy componentry, bits and pieces at a time. So is it a $304,000 program then? Yes. Okay, thank you. And um, similarly, but on a smaller scale, um, there's carry forwards on the page 152 for community libraries, um, interior design renewals, program 203. There's carry forward for 31,000, delaying to align with timing of civic and cultural precinct. Um, but there's also another program for the same program for this year for 21. So if we're delaying this year's programs for things like interior design for that reason, would there be a view to also de be delaying the 22-23 programs for thing things like that? I mean, that's one example, but there's a few that are similar in that way. I'm sorry, Councillor, could you please repeat the question? So um, there's a few programmes, and, and as an example, um, Programme 203, which is the interior design renewals for community libraries, there's a carry forward of 31,000 on page 152 of the agenda. Um, there's a carry forward there, and the reason that's in the, uh, explained there is delaying to align with timing of civic and cultural precinct. Uh, that program also has an amount in the 22-23 year of 21,000. So what is the thinking around if it's being delayed from this year to next year? Are we just adding to that and presuming that we'll do something next year or does the 22-23 amount also need to be delayed? Or what is the thinking around some of those um, interior design programs? Um, yes, the thinking really is that the work needs to be done, and that um, deferring it um, obviously um, has an impact. So initially it was aligned with the um, Civic and Cultural Precinct, um, 
and then that project obviously isn't happening now, but the uh, interior design work um, still needs to be done. So, um, yeah, deferring it, um, the intention is to do the work, if that makes sense. So do we need double the budget in 22-23 to do the work? Do well, we the, need last year's and this year's budget? Yes, correct. Okay. Um, thank you. I'll leave it there. Great. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, we will look at uh, Capital New now. We'll make uh, a start on that. Um, and now, is there anything else from officers? Through the chair, um, my apologies again. One of the impacts of COVID has been that not necessarily all of the information that we were seeking to provide you has been provided. Um, one of the elements of information that we um, were hoping to get to you was a, um, a note that currently there isn't any funding for um, ongoing boy racer activity management. In um, Earlier on this year, you, you granted us um, 50 grand to put in speed bumps at Works Road and um, Valor Drive, um, that, which was very much appreciated both by the infrastructure unit and the, the people uh, who the boy racers were affecting. Um, there are other sites that we know are being impacted by boy racer activity. Um, we had looked to suggest a capital new budget um, to enable us to do uh, mitigation activities at a number of other sites. Um, we were thinking a capital new budget of approximately $100,000 per year. Um, it might only be needed for one or two years while we go and address those critical key points, but that was certainly of the order of. The other element, which actually comes into operating budgets, unfortunately, um, is we have never had a budget for clean-up. Um, boy racers tend to do things like um, leave lots of tyres around, and, and the, the big events uh, also need a lot of clean-up of bottles and, and cans and other debris, plus the clean-up that we get for road safety where diesel spilt on the road and we have to mobilise crews in the middle of the night to go out and, and make them safe and protect the environment. Um, in addition to that, um, we recognise that you've had advice that um, police can ask council to close roads in extreme circumstances temporarily where a large influx of boy racers is expected. Again, there isn't any current operating budget to do that. And we haven't um, ever had those budgets in the past. We've, we've tended to, to use um, things like sort of storm response budgets for some of our emergency responses at the moment. But going forward, um, given that that then puts the, the budget for an actual storm response at risk, um, we were recommending um, a, approximately... Uh, $50,000 a year to be in, in OPEX to be made up of $30,000 for sort of substantial clean-up, including emergency clean-up, and $20,000 for um, mobilisation for temporary road closures. My apologies for bringing that to you late. Um, I, I know that it, it's a... Uh, uh, yeah, my apologies. We were hoping to get that information to you earlier, but COVID has impacted everything, including some of our communication channels. Thank you, Sarah. Um, uh, I think a few of the councillors and myself understand where you're coming from because there's been uh, multiple, multiple um, issues uh, around the, the city. And although we've, we fix one area and it's like pulling a lever, they move to somewhere else. We just want them to move to MDC or TDC or HDC. <laughs> you said that out loud, right? <laughs> um, Councillor Hayes. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, 
Right. Um, questions, Councillor Naylor. It's not really a question, but just a comment to you, Mr Chair. I would not want to be making decisions on things that have just been verbally presented at the table Oh, today. no, it don't, there's something yeah. that have to come up. Yeah. I was just hoping that that wasn't the expectation, that was all. Well, what, what the officer is telling us, that um, there, is, there is a gap, and it's up to the councillors okay. if they wish to do something about okay. it. Okay, so I guess the question is, is there um, intended that there'll be a paper presented at the June committee of council meeting, or in what way will that information be presented in a way that we can give it pro appropriate consideration? Um, we were anticipating um, have you having the information. I, the, I thought that you'd got the information, so I was surprised that there wasn't a notice of motion about it. If, if councillors today want to raise a notice of motion, that's entirely up to you. If not, then yes, we will seek to bring something very concise to one of the meetings in June. Thank you. Okay. All right. We'll look at Capital New now. We'll start that process. Any further questions? Councillor Hancock. Yes, sorry, Mr Mayor. Uh, just, I suppose just really a question is that um, over lunchtime I could actually uh, put, put a motion up in respect of the, uh, the street race issue. Yeah. yeah, and I would second it. So, Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Okay, we'll start on our capital new... No, no more questions of the officers? Um, it doesn't stop from questions being answered um, throughout, the, throughout the day, but um, we've got the bulk of those out of the way. Okay, we will look at... I'm just going to get something up on screen. Okay, so this is around the capital expenditure program changes, and this is around... Uh, the committee recommending that the following capital program is deferred to the 23-24 year. This is program 167 around James Line improvements of 1,443,000. That's from Councillor Harpeter. Um, over to you, Councillor. Thanks, Mr Mayor. And thank you for the officers for um, putting the comments into Schedule F, which I've read. Um, putting this forward, um, there were three submissions um, that uh, supported um, this going forward. Um, I just um, still are, are of the opinion that um, we could defer this program for a year. The reason I am saying this is that we're in a, a year where We've got the rates very high because of the revaluation, re so we need to look at programs that we can defer for a year. So um, I have read the comments that the design has been completed, which is good, but um, I just feel we need to look at programs that we can defer for a year. I know it will put more pressure on for next year, but we do need to look for some capital programs that we can put out. So this is one that I think that we can put out for a year, and that's why I'm asking for support around the table for that, and considering that there were three submissions that actually supported that. So thanks, councillors. Okay, thank you. And before we, um, uh, there's nobody else speaking, I'll, I'll speak to this. Um, could I just ask the officers, um, there has been some speed reductions around that part of the city, uh, around Stony Creek Road, James, Lyon, Kelvin Grove. I mean, ha has there been speed reductions there? They were certainly signalled. Um, so there's not been no official speed limit drop on that section of road. Um, we'd have to go back and have a look at the, the statistics okay. to figure Including out. Including intersections. I thought there had been from NZTA. Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Councillor Dennison. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I'm not in favour of deferring this project. This has um, been one that we've... This is the last part of a four-stage project and um, the urban development out that way is, has been increasing. The traffic uh, count has been increasing. And so therefore, um, I think it's justified that we continue on with the plan to finish that um, length of road. And um, yeah, I just really wanted to voice my, I guess my um, support to carry it on in the, as is planned. Thank you. Okay, 
Nobody else wanting to speak. Um, I will come back to you, Councillor, for a right or a... OK. All right, so councillors, we've got it up there. That's deferring it for one year. So I'll ask you to vote, please. It's, uh, is that, could we? Okay, we've got one councillor that um, has left the meeting early, so online. So um, it is 14 of us here, and uh, unfortunately that has failed. Um, that's seven all, so it doesn't have a majority. Right, thank you. We'll move through to the... The next one, and this is around, um, we'll get that up first. This again is around capital expenditure program changes, uh, around the capital program being deferred to 23, 24 year. This is program 2122, Streets for People. This is two, um, 2.9 million, um, and that's from Councillor Naylor. Thank you. Um, this won't be a surprise to anyone. I've mentioned this a few times in recent weeks. Um, I think there's a few reasons why um, I'm putting this forward as looking for us to defer this for a year. Um, the first being the um, 25 specific submissions that related to this program that are um, identified on page 70 of our um, agenda. Um, secondly, I think it, it's important to me um, that what we ask officers to deliver in the coming year is realistic. I don't believe um, that a $101 million capital program is a realistic budget to deliver. And I actually think trying to deliver a program that big will put unnecessary um, pressure on staff. I don't believe with the current vacancies um, that we have the staff to deliver the full program. And I think as elected members, if we're not going to deliver the full program, then it's better for us to identify the priorities of what do, does and doesn't get delivered, rather than leaving that for officers to be struggling to try and deliver all of them in the year and having to perhaps choose that themselves, which things are the priority. I think that overwhelming public feedback verbally that I've been hearing in recent months also, and I'm sure you all have heard, is around the perceived value of the amount that is spent. And I have no doubt that that part of the square looks lovely that's been done already. It certainly had a huge um, over, you know, it, was, it cost a lot more than what we had initially um, budgeted for. I think not only that is that I think it would be really unsettling for the CBD to have that whole area of the square dug up at this time, as those businesses are just recovering from the impact of COVID. Um, it, it's really clear to us the impact on businesses when there is that much upheaval right outside their door. I think this is something that can wait. I don't believe it's a project that's got significant public support for proceeding at this time. And the perception for those ratepayers that will end up with a big rates increase, despite all of our efforts here today, the perception from those ratepayers to be paying rates that they can't afford when there are big programs like that that are being delivered under their nose that they don't perceive as high priority, I think it's just really wise for us to consider deferring that. Councillor Hapita. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, I've been a strong supporter of Streets of People right from the start, um, and I still think it's a very good programme. But I do feel that we do need to look at the design of what we've got to come, rather than just going along with what we've already done. So I do think we need to go back to the drawing board of what we've got now, and maybe take a breath and say, hey, 
maybe we don't carry on doing what we've currently got. I agree with Councillor Naylor. I do think maybe we take a year off and have a look at what we've, we can do with a lesser budget. I don't think we need to go and do and have the big pavers and maybe, I'm not telling you what to do, but maybe not spend so much money on it. I think the city and the community are sick of us spending a lot of money on things in the city like this. So personally, I am a big supporter of this project. I do think we need a clean up like this, but not spending so much money on the streets. So I will be supporting this. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Look, uh, I will too support this. Again, like Councillor Harpeter, um, I've led the charge on um, ensuring that our, our city centre is um, uh, looking good, and uh, this was part of the rejuvenation of that. But the timing's not great, um, as for all the reasons Councillor Naylor and Councillor Harpeter said. Um, there's a couple of major building programmes going in that part of the town which will be announced soon, and I think the timing could be better placed in 23-24 when those projects, major projects, will happen. So I just think we're not quite synced there, um, and it's something clearly a lot of our um, people cannot afford at this stage. Also, like um, Councillor Harpeter, the scope, um, I've had a number of... Um, ex-staff members and also contractors come to me and saying, why are you ripping out perfectly good pavers in Broadway Avenue? Why are you uh, ripping out trees? So I just wonder if the scope, and we all know that um, uh, architects and landscape gardeners love to start with a blank sheet, but I just do wonder if the scope could be, uh, have another look at, because it really has not, other than a very high level concept plan, it's, we, we don't get any involvement at all. So we just get the bill. So I would uh, urge you to, um, we're just going to defer this. We're not saying no to it. It's just um, the timing's not good. Councillor Johnson. Uh, thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, yes, I'm supporting deferring this because I think it is an issue of timing, particularly for businesses. Now, we've had a number of businesses in the CBD uh, close during COVID and uh, the significant disruption with this um, reconfiguration um, of the of the streets. And, um, you know, even um, when we did Square East, um, you know, there were a number of businesses that that basically said they only survived because it did coincide with COVID and they got some compensation um, through the government schemes. Otherwise, they would have been in trouble too. And I think um, just at the moment, it's really bad timing to uh, do a big project like this and disrupt um, business in the CBD. And secondly, um, I agree with Councillor Naylor's assessment that, you know, a capital, um, a potential capital spend of over 100 million is not realistic. So uh, we need to be clear about where the priorities are and which projects and need to be deferred. Thanks. Back to you, Councillor Naylor, for right of reply. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think it's all m mostly been said, really. I just think um, it's not essential work at, at, for this year. Um, it just to also acknowledge that the 600,000 design work that's been carried forward is still there, so it can still be, work can still be done around um, any sort of planning for the future um, that might be done. Okay, councillors, we have it up on screen. We will vote, please. And that is passed, 13 votes for and one against. Right, councillors, um, I'm just wary of people's time frames. I've got a few phone calls to make as well. 
So we will break for a lunch break. Um, thank you to the team um, and councillors and those online. We'll see you back um, online and in the chamber at 1.30, please. Thank you.